in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Bande Kalikosia, sing in the spirit. The Lord showed you you will be a champion. This is not it yet. The Lord told you you will heal the sick in the visions of the Lord. You saw yourself liberating nations in the visions of the Lord. You saw more than this. This can't be it. Go to Pasikata. We're not camping around this realm. No way. No way, we are not camping around this realm of knowledge, this realm of grace. We contend for higher levels in the spirit. We will not stop fasting. We will not stop praying. We will not stop traveling. We will not stop building. The realm of our call, the realm of our destiny is bigger than this, higher than this. Greater than this. Come on, lift your voice and pray. This can be it. Carry over, notwithstanding. Withdraw, notwithstanding. Prophesy. Lack, notwithstanding. Poverty, notwithstanding. Infirmity, notwithstanding. This can be This can't be it My God, you're so much Bigger than this This can't be it You are so much Bigger than this This can't be you are so much, you are so much bigger than this. This can't be it. You are so much, you are so much bigger than this. This can't be it. Hallelujah. Listen. Abraham had about 312 people and he thought that was all about his destiny. Little did he know that the call that was upon him was a generational call. That he would represent the portrait of a blessed man. When God called him out of where he was, he thought that there can be nothing higher. Let me tell you something. The greatest enemy of success is the last one you had. Because it can create complacency and make you feel that all to the circumference of your destiny is that. The Bible says the sons of the prophet were with Elisha. And one day they told him, they say, where we meet with you is too small. Let us go beyond the Jordan. I tell you, the choir got it on the spot in the spirit. We are still going to pray for five minutes. I just feel we need to let this rest. Because there are many things speaking to some of you. It's like there is a limit that life and culture has created over you. But tonight you need to challenge everything. The Bible says, listen, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. It says they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every yetzah, every imagination 
that attempts to exalt itself your past failures notwithstanding this can be it come on prophesy let the devil hear you speak let angels hear you speak though he slay me yet will i praise him the bible says there is hope for a tree though it be cut down he said at the scent of water lord this can't be it challenge yourself throw away complacency tell yourself this is not what i saw in my vision no he showed me nations not a city he showed me greatness not mediocrity and all the families of the earth not the city of zaria all the families of the earth shall call you blessed you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, until you get to the utmost part of the earth. Yes, Lord. Calling us deeper, deeper, deeper. That's the secret in the spirit. You first will go deeper, deeper, deeper. Then you can go higher. Higher, higher. The Bible says, listen, it says the remnant of the house of Jacob, they shall bear root downwards and then they will bear fruit upwards. There is no upward movement until your root is solid, grounded, established in truth. This is what we seek to do. Every time we gather, if you don't have a seat, stand. If you cannot sit, find the ground. Do not allow anything limit you. There is a curriculum of the spirit. You faithfully see that will endure to the end. Because the Bible says to that one, they will be given a crown and a white stone. No man who worried will entangle himself with the things of civilians. hallelujah praise the lord god bless you worship team listen there is an end to every spiritual pursuit this is not a vain this is not a vain seeking of something that is ambiguous. We are not confused about what we are pressing into. Are you listening to me? We are not confused. Week after week, the Bible says, He that soweth unto the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life eternal. But he that soweth unto the flesh, he will reap corruption. We are not just chasing after shadows. No. No. There is a definiteness guaranteed by the integrity of the word that we will arrive there. Are you listening to me? And so every time you have the opportunity to show up in his presence, realize that this is your demonstration of your willingness to proceed in this spiritual journey. For there is an end to all things. Let me tell you something. The Bible says, if the cloud be full of rain, if the cloud be full there is an incense of sacrifice that is being raised week after week you may look like a fool doing it but there is the god who sits and the bible says righteousness and justice ah god cannot be mocked 
do not be deceived whatsoever any man sows that will he reap there is a seed you are sowing and there is a god who sits upon a throne backed up by justice he will see to it according to jeremiah 1 12. the bible says he's alert and active watching over his word to bring it to pass and so your success in life does not become a mistake it is men who do not understand the part of the spirit that criticize great men because they do not know that it is on, upon the bowels of much traveling and alignment in the spirit that you command power in the heavens it's not a gift it's a reward take over take over we have come to the end of ourselves take over take over we have come to the end of our hallelujah hallelujah we have come to the end of us hallelujah hallelujah we have come to the end just the voices take over take over i have come to the end of myself take over we have come to the end of myself hallelujah hallelujah we have come to the end of ourselves hallelujah 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 i made a vow with my life and with destiny that I will not stop until my destiny looks like the visions that the Lord has shown me. This is why I don't get distracted with the frivolities of men. The journey is still far. Regardless of what it is that men say, I don't have time to waste my time. There is an urgency upon my spirit. Many of us just take one or two steps and then you stop there. Uh -uh. You must contend in the spirit. Every time God wants to challenge me, he he, he reintroduces to me the visions of the Lord that he showed me and it puts a fire upon my bones when you come to the end of yourself then you are ready to begin a journey with him this is not a special number the songs that we sing are deep songs of the spirit they are an attempt to be able to articulate and communicate certain things we have come to the end of us Hallelujah. Listen. You can choose to remain at the level that you are. You won't go to hell. You can choose to remain at the level that you are. When it comes to the walk with God, the experiential walk with the Holy Spirit in the kingdom, listen. No man cajoles you. It's sad that the body of Christ is full of pranks and tricks and cajoling. Great men are not made that way. For the birth of anything valuable is painful. It is as soon as Zion travails that she puts forth a son. Many of us are used to all kinds of pampering. No, no, no. When it comes to the realm of greatness, you must gain structure and dexterity in the spirit. It will cost you your time. It will cost you sacrifice. You will make decisions that are uncommon. But at the end of that, there will be a crown. Hallelujah. There must first be a desire in your heart to leave the realm where you are. I don't compare the standard I want to become with many people in our generation because it's an apology. When I read about the fathers of old, I, I, I am challenged. What did these ancient people see? What realm did they touch that made them like immortals upon the earth? Hebrews begins to leave them. It says through faith, they subdued kingdoms. They shut the mouths of lions. 
there is a realm that is deficient in the body of Christ. We have lost touch with reality in the spirit. There is a call for us to return and contend for the things that are genuine, lasting and potent. Where the Holy Spirit does not become a strange personality. This is why we call this koinonia. This is a place where we expose you to the reality of a personality, not a phenomenon. A personality that is able to help you and make your life become a wonder. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Always I'll cry. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Call his name. Holy Ghost, you are the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, you are the Holy Ghost. Take your place, take your place, take your place, take your place. Just the voices one more time. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, you are the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, you are the Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. When this become the anthem of your life the things that men die chasing after will be given unto you at a platter of gold it will be the reward of your consistency with the spirit hallelujah if your heart is determined to pursue him to seek him you will get power you will get fame increase influence he said one thing is needful you are running around chasing after many things one thing is needful one thing is needful this is the first message to many of us tonight hallelujah many people are looking for the secret of many things success power anointing grace increase but let me tell you something in my little journey i have found out that the holy spirit is called the fountain of life he is the universal set consisting of everything that you will want i didn't start my journey with any hidden agenda i've said it again and again i was not looking for anointing i was not looking for power I was not looking for crowd i was not looking for recognition my heart was panting after the reality of the kingdom experience because i was dissatisfied with the status quo and the things that men have camped around something in my spirit told me this was not it and as i began to contend and get deeper into this journey that I did not know the mission was follow me God did not give me any assurance on the way hmm. God did not promise me a crowd God did not promise me I'll be wearing suit one day but he promised me his presence and he kept that promise I'm not obliged to accuse God for anything because he kept what he said he will give me his presence his glorious presence when you have that presence you command every other thing i mean it you will literally
command every other thing. This is the master key. The glorious presence of God. It should not just be a church thing. It must become a reality. And the Lord walking with them. And as a result, confirming the word, not their word, the word with signs following. And the Lord. Moses said, do not let us. We have no ministry outside his presence. Do not let us depart. Oh, but if you will go with me, I will go anywhere. And there is one guarantee exploits unlimited satan notwithstanding because of his divine presence he's the holy ghost don't join me you're the holy ghost i call you the holy ghost you are the holy ghost take your place Take your place Breathe on us tonight Breathe on us You are the Holy Ghost The presence of the living God You are the Holy Ghost you are the Holy Ghost. Change our lives now. Change our lives now. Have your way. Have your way. Just pray one prayer and say, Lord, I surrender all to you. From the depths of your heart, I surrender all. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb, worthy, worthy. The Lamb, faithful, faithful, faithful is the Lamb, faithful, faithful is the Lamb, awesome, Awesome. Awesome Hallelujah Spirit of the living God We are gathered tonight in this place It will never become A traditional display of religion Nor will it be the vain quest of men to seek relevance But it will remain the tabernacle of glory where you are building and raising and training great people we dissociate ourselves from the frivolities and the vain quest to seek significance after or outside your presence for in thee is the fountain of life and in thy light do we see i praise you and bless you tonight we sit at the feet of the great rabbi teach us the mysteries of the kingdom that will prepare us let us eat the bread of the spirit for the journey is far strengthen us O god that we will bear root and be stable in our christian experience hallelujah i welcome everyone tonight please hug three or four people tell them god bless you and be seated Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for coming, everyone. Hallelujah. 
It's always a privilege. I apologize for all the people who are having to stand. I assure you, this is not a waste. Not when you are doing it for His Majesty. May the Lord cause the nations to stand before you because they will stand in awe. Hallelujah. I'd rather stand before God than to stand begging and clamoring for the attention of men. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to tell you something. It is always a privilege. Always a privilege to bring the word of the Lord to us. I have never considered it as a right. I didn't earn it. This is an election of grace. Before I was born, God has been blessing and raising people. And if he tarries after we are gone, there will still be the impact of the Spirit. Look, sit down anywhere you find. If you can sit on stage and you won't feel embarrassed, go ahead. We're excellent people and we're organized. But not too organized to rob people of entering their glorious destiny. Hallelujah. There is a longing that only you can feel. A raging tempest that only you can steal. My heart is thirsty, Lord, to know you as I'm known. Drink from the river flows before your throne take me deeper deeper in love with you Jesus hold me close to your embrace would you take me deeper Deeper than I've ever been before I just want to love you more and more How I long That's my desire That's my desire All the time My desire is not to be a great preacher I'm telling you Being a great preacher does not heal the sick. It doesn't cast out devils. It doesn't change destinies. I desire to know Him. I desire to know Him with all my heart. There is an urgency in my spirit that is not bound to this realm nor anything this realm can offer. It is my singular pursuit. As far as I'm concerned, I have not begun ministry yet. This is only the preparation for an extraordinary life. I want to challenge you, even as we start. Your desire for God must be genuine. Otherwise, you will be tired later on. Hallelujah. It's good to receive from God. It's good to receive that's why we have miracle services where we trust the spirit of god to release great things into the lives of men but let me tell you if your circumference of your pursuit for god is centered around the things you will get your christian experience will be poor hallelujah praise the lord lord we bless you tonight we'll be considering something please bring out your notebooks, whatever you have to write. I want to teach tonight on the walking knowledge of the word. The walking knowledge of the word. It's the Greek word epignosis. 
the working knowledge of the word. Blessed be the name of the Lord. John 8. How many of you believe God is here? Those of us who are pastors and men of God or will be called into ministry, listen, let me give you a frank advice. If you have the best stage in the world and you have the best of media people, you wear the best of suits and you lack the presence of God, you are wasting God's time and the time of His people. Hallelujah. All of those things are only relevant if you can sustain the presence of God. Shalom, Shalom, Jerusalem. Peace be to you. When Messiah comes to take us home, May His praise be found in you. Shalom, 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 Jerusalem. Shalom, 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 Jerusalem. Lord, we will give you no rest until we become the Zion of our Lord experientially. John 8 I rather not have a ministry and have his presence I rather be considered a failure and have his presence when you have his presence you have everything learn this when you have his presence you will have every other thing. I cannot burn this enough into your spirit. Everybody listen. When you have his presence, you have everything. The presence of God is the end of every argument. The end of every contention. Let your presence never depart from this house, O God. Let it please you, Majesty, to make this place a tabernacle of your presence. You called it Koinonia. This is a place where we meet. Let this be the gates of heaven. Let nothing in this place turn into religion. Let it not be the simple quest of men to make meaning out of their lives. Lord, that you will find a place that you can tabernacle and build men and train men. Holy Spirit, you will find full expression in the midst of your people. Your presence. We covet greater weights of your presence greater than any revelation hmm. greater than any anointing the presence of the living God presence of the living God
Lord, we honestly desire you. This is a true commitment from our hearts. On behalf of your people, Lord, we express a desperation. We want to see all of you manifest in our lives. We know that there is an extraordinary life destined for us in Christ. And we labor in the spirit to apprehend that which has been kept aforetime for us. So help us, O God, tonight as we advance in this sincere quest. It's a preparation for a fire and a revival that the earth has not seen. You brought everyone here by your predeterminate counsel. Teach us, great rabbi. We sit before your holy presence, break the bread of the Spirit and cause understanding to be crystallized upon us. May we not be men void of spiritual understanding. Strengthen our hearts out of the abundance of the deposit of spiritual things that you will put in us. Give us grace to be able to read the writings on the wall. That we may stand among the great and command power in this realm. We thank you because it is your great desire to do this. We yield ourselves to you, O Great One. Breathe upon us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. John 8. Verse 32. The working knowledge of the word. This is what I want to teach on tonight. Hallelujah. And you shall know the truth. And the truth that you know. Not that is available. The truth that you have, that you know. Will make you free. The word know the truth there is the Greek word epigenosko is the complete and accurate knowledge of anything that brings the person who is knowing and what is known into oneness hallelujah and you shall know there will be an intercourse between you and the truth and as a result you will experience liberty you will experience freedom the limitations that and the encumbrances of life that keep you at the lower echelons of life will give room and you will celebrate freedom it says you shall know the truth not that you will hear about the truth you will know it's one thing to hear it's another thing to know Hallelujah. This realm is governed by knowledge. Write it. This realm is governed by knowledge. The degree of light that you have. Isaiah 61 verse 1. It says, Arise. Comma. Shine. It says, for your light is come. Arise, shine. Not because you want to arise. Not because you, this is not an issue of desire here. It is the byproduct of the coming of your light. Arise, shine. For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. This is the prophecy, verse 2. It says, for darkness shall cover the earth and deep gross darkness darkness symbolizes confusion ignorance gross darkness upon the people it says but the lord will arise over you and his glory shall be seen in you verse 3 as a result it says the gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of your rising gentiles unbelievers 
will be compelled by your light, the knowledge that you have. And even kings will come to the brightness of your rising. This realm, listen, listen, please. This realm is governed by knowledge. This realm is not governed by miracles. It's not governed by guesswork. As good as miracles are, the earth is not governed by miracles. A miracle is only necessary because there is a violation of a principle. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. The prophet began to lament. Speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He says, my people are destroyed. My people are destroyed. Because of lack of knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. My people are destroyed. For lack of knowledge. Listen. It says because you have rejected knowledge. I will also reject you from being a priest. That means it takes knowledge. Everybody say light. Everybody say light. Knowledge. This realm is governed by knowledge. That means the limitation that you have in life is the limitation of knowledge. For you will only arise to the degree to which your light comes. I'm convinced that where I am in life and the limitations in my life are the limitations of light. And so the remedy is to contend. The Bible says he made many lights. All of those many lights have their dimensions, but he made two great lights. Two great lights. And at the emergence of those lights, they silenced all those little lights. He says one to rule the day and the other to rule the night. I've said it and I've said it again and again, that if that light comes, you will rule both in the day and in the night. Hallelujah. So where you are today, seated looking at me, is where your realm of knowledge and understanding of spiritual things have kept you. I am convinced that no enemy and no devil can keep a man when his knowledge has lifted him higher. There are two ways to bind Satan. One is by prayer, the other is by knowledge. Your knowledge can make you live as if Satan does not exist. They know not, the Bible says, neither do they understand. They will grow up in darkness. And so the earth is out of course. But have I not said, ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. He said, but you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. Psalm 82. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Are you there? Okay, Psalm 82. Can you give us Psalm 82? Let's just look at it from the Amplified. It's possible. Everybody say after me, I go for knowledge. I refuse to remain where I am. I go for knowledge. If you will believe this, this is a very powerful revelation. That where you are today, is because of the limitation of your knowledge. From verse 4. Deliver the poor and the needy. Rescue them out of the hands of the wicked. Verse 5. The magistrates and judges know not. This is talking about you. You will understand that from the context of verse 1. It says, Neither will they understand. And as a result, they walk on it in darkness. What is the darkness there? Of complacent satisfaction. As a result, all the foundations of the earth, the fundamental principles upon which rest the administration of justice are shaking. Verse 6. This is God speaking to the great. 
he says i have said ye are gods since you judge on my behalf as my representatives indeed all of you are children of the most high the last verse but you shall die as mere men and fall as one of these princes everybody say knowledge accurate knowledge working knowledge not theoretical knowledge epignosis talks of the working knowledge knowledge that can be applicable to bring you results many of us have all kinds of religious junks and theory that cannot stand the test of time so many listen we we live in a generation of rema and knowledge there are people who can quote genesis 1 to revelation 22 we have a lot of theoretical knowledge about different aspects of the christian faith but none of this knowledge is potent enough to deliver to us the reality of what the word says will be he says ye search the scripture for in them ye think you will find life and you will not come to me he said the letter killeth but the spirit quickeneth that should be psalms i mean john 6 63 i think john 6 63 the words that i speak unto you it says it is the spirit who gives life he is the life giver the flesh conveys no benefit whatsoever the words the truths that's why the bible says ye shall know the word ye shall know the truth I have been speaking to you as spirit and life. Everybody say, I contend for knowledge. The walking knowledge of the truth. I began to edit my life some years ago. And I found out that I had many useless, though spiritual knowledge. Useless, though spiritual. Because I used it in the face of danger and it was helpless. So I knew that this was nonsense. If it is the word of God, it should carry in it the life of God to deliver results. Is that correct? And so I began, I made a resolution that I was not going to waste my time junking myself with religious knowledge that is not able to produce results in my life. There are people who have heaps of books in their houses. They've read everything, but knowledge that is vain. Let me show you something very powerful. Ecclesiastes, the last chapter, that should be chapter 12. From verse 10. Are you getting blessed? Please take seriously what I'm sharing. I'm trying to be as simple as possible so that everyone will receive. Ecclesiastes 12. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words. That which was written was upright and verse 11. He says, The words of the wise are as goats and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. Verse 12. Listen. He says, And further, by this my son be admonished, of making many books there is no end, and much study is a weariness to the flesh. Now this is not saying you should not study. You understand the context? Junking yourself with all kinds of knowledge that only makes you feel that you are making progress but you are not making any progress hallelujah there are weariness to the flesh 13 he said let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear god and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man you can stop there could it be that the knowledge you have been having is only puffing you up but it's not delivering results that means there is need to convert your theoretical spiritual knowledge into the working knowledge the working knowledge i learned this from bishop david oyedeko remains my lifelong mentor in the area of wisdom a man who has contacted the spirit of wisdom knowledge that can be applied 
If you study glass technology and this glass is broken and you carry it and throw it away, of what good is your knowledge? Are you listening to me? Walking knowledge. Practical, applicable knowledge. There are many people who know almost all the scriptures. And demons come and oppress them and they are helpless. It means your knowledge is not applicable. It's not working. Hallelujah. Are you receiving something? And I want to challenge you tonight. And expose you to the principles that can help your knowledge become experiential. You can know that what you know can work for you. Listen, can I tell you something? There is a waiting process in faith. But the waiting time is not forever. The end of faith is a performance. This is what validates the waiting time. Thank you, Jesus. The first thing I want to talk about is the supremacy of God's word. Everybody write the supremacy of God's word. The supremacy of God's word. God's word in this realm is the final authority over the affairs of men. God's word is the final authority. Final authority when it comes to the affairs of men. Your experiences notwithstanding. Your experiences do not have the capacity to validate the word of God. The word of God is that standard, is that benchmark that all other things revolve around. That means when your Christian experience is not tilting you towards the reality of the word of God, you can check and know that something is wrong with your life. There are many ministries that build their churches and their ministries around spiritual experiences. Never build your Christian life just around visions and dreams. You will get into a lot of demonic error. That's the problem with a lot of people. They are always seeing something every day. And they never consult the word. And so it leads them into blind error. They are like a pendulum. Swinging from left to right. Can I tell you something? Those who will last in these days. Are men who give priority to the word of God. Not men who have visions and dreams. I believe in spiritual experiences. But the realm of the spirit is such a complex realm. You must only look at it from the realm of God's word. To pick out that which is relevant to your destiny. Hallelujah. Right now, if you are seeing visions and someone is an ardent student of the word, that student feels very inferior. He feels me, I'm not seeing anything. And we brag about the things that we see and hear in the spirit. Do you not know that your experiences have not been tested, but the word of God has been tested seven times through every dispensation and it has been found to last. If you build your church upon the word of God, I don't care what men say, it will stand. If you build it upon visions and prophecies, get set, they will fall. If you build your miracle, there are many men of God who build their miracles around anointing. As good as that is, I feel very sorry for them. The word of God. The spirit and life of God. God is only commanded to go anywhere his word attracts him to. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? The supremacy. When you come to a point where you realize that the word of God is the final authority. Everybody say final authority. Concerning any area. If it's your finance, the word of God is the final authority. If it's your well-being, the word of God is final authority. So if I tell you, you will not die. And you say, ah, the man of God has spoken to me that I will not die. That is wonderful. But can I tell you something? There is a more sure word of prophecy. That you find out in God's word. That I shall not die but live to declare. 
Any other prophetic word that comes only comes as a confirmation. Listen, my life is grounded upon solid. I thank God that I did not start my spiritual journey on visions and dreams. I started it upon the solid foundation of seeking the word. Hallelujah. There are many people who will not believe the word of God until a man of God stands and prophesies and speaks it to them. There are many people who cannot take the word of God and believe and say, look, this word guarantees certain things. Thank God for the gifts in the body. But do you know that the word of God is greater and bigger than any man of God? And that at the revelation of the true revelation of this word, you can open up any closed door. Koinonia is not running on guesswork. That's why we don't give ourselves heart attack for once. We are running upon the infallible, irrefutable, working, practical knowledge of God's word. Did you hear what I said? We are not working upon just a blind prophecy. Practical, irrefutable. The heavens and the earth will pass away, but the word of God abided forever. What is your life built upon right now? There are many of you, our lives are built upon shadows. The day the man of God who has become the anchor to your life is not around, you are dead. Our churches are full of gullible people who are just running. Oh, prophet, just tell me something. Just touch me, just touch me. And they don't know why. Now, I believe in these vessels. You will get something because they are anointed. But did you know that you are only established to the degree to which you have the working knowledge of God? If someone looks at me today and says that witches had a meeting that I would die, I'm not even going to pray about it. I tell you, I have too many important things. My 24 hours has been well sectioned. There is no space for frivolities. Hallelujah. This is why you find out that there are ministries that have a lot of crowd but no growth. No spiritual growth. Gullible beggars looking for men of God chasing after people everywhere that should be built and established in truth. It's God's desire. Shame on us if all we have in this place is a crowd of people sitting everywhere with little or no spiritual knowledge. This is why we dedicate only one Friday in the whole month. We sit under the word of God and feed you with truth that will build you so that you will now begin to command results and bring blessings to others. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Knowledge. Spiritual knowledge is very powerful. There are all kinds of books that have been written about church growth, church planting, church principles, advancement. I've read some of those books and I'm sorry to tell you they are just junks. Those who wrote them do not even have a working knowledge. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Then shall thou make your ways prosperous and you shall have good success. Everybody say the supremacy of God's word. The word of God reigns supreme over your life. Anybody that is leading you into any spiritual dimension outside God's word is a herbalist. Run! Don't pray! That's why before we begin ministering to you, we make sure that we show you the scriptural foundation upon which we do everything. And this is why he confirmed the words of his messengers. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Very important! You must have a working, practical, experiential knowledge of God's truth. If I ask you today, why will you be successful in life? What will be your answer? Hallelujah. I'm not going to ask you. But if I ask you, if someone asks you right now, say, sister, can you stand up? Don't worry, I won't ask you. Stand up. Oh yeah, now, stand up. If I ask this lovely lady now, and I say, 
Why are you, are you going to be successful in life? That's the only one I will ask. She said definitely. But listen, did you know that success is not the issue of willpower? Forget about willpower has never brought anybody success. It's not even a function of resolution. When I see your investment in the word of God, I can predict your future. Hallelujah. I don't care what confessions you are making. If I do not see you contending for the truth of God's word, I know you are wasting your time and the time of others. Hallelujah. Say after me, the word of God reigns supreme. Yes. It must reign supreme. That means the following, number one. Your life must be compelled to live by the principles of the word. Your life must be compelled. Notice I use the word compel. It says mortify your body. This body is stubborn. Your life must be compelled to come under the governing influence of the word. A believer is not just one who talks church things. A believer is one who has submitted to the governing authority of the word. That the word of God becomes your basis of judgment and decision. Are you listening to me? Is someone learning something? So listen to me. Hold on. Now I want to open a shop. Hallelujah. The first thing is not to run and look for capital. The first thing is to run to the word of God. And find out what is the economic program that the word of God has earmarked for the success of the believer. If you are not doing that, I feel sorry for whatever you are doing. Hallelujah. You want to get married. The first thing is not to say, Kai, Pastor Jakes, I saw this beautiful girl. Mm -mm, leave that girl alone. Run to the word. The walking knowledge. Hallelujah. And then you begin to study. The Bible says, he that finds a wife finds a good thing, not a bad thing. And so you say, wow, there are many ways to get good things in life. One of it is marriage. That becomes your basis of joy. And then you now check. One can conquer a thousand. Two can conquer ten thousand. That means you expect acceleration and increase in your life. Listen, many people do not allow the word of God, the applicable knowledge. We have knowledge that we cannot use. We cannot try. He said, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. He didn't say thy word is a book in my hands. Thy word is a lamp to my feet. That's guidance. And a light to my path. That's direction. The moment there is anything in life, the first thing, the first place to run to is the word. Search it out. Stay with the word until light breaks forth. People fast. They have no revelation of what they are doing. So it becomes a meaningless spiritual exercise. People do night vigils. They only do it because they are emulating those who have been successful. That's the reason why something can be blessing somebody else and be killing another person. The same thing. Lack of light. Hallelujah. I never do anything in my life because people are doing it. Never. People can be running. I'll just sit down and be looking at them. They say, won't you join? I say, me? Go where? Who is going to shorty my running? Who is going to take responsibility for when God does not send you, he doesn't back you. I never do anything. That's why you notice that we don't do anything in this place except God directs us. And when God directs us, we are committed to it. Doggedly. What has been governing your life? What has been governing your life? For many of us, we do not have time for the word. We have time to discuss our problems with everybody. 
We have time to run around chewing from morning till night in the homes of prophets. And apostles and teachers and every kind of person. But we do not have time for the word. You just spend five minutes inspiring women or rhapsody of realities or every day with Jesus. Thank God for these resources. But you give your academics only that time and see if you will excel. What makes you believe? The clearest proof of love is the investment of time. Whatever you love, you will have time for it. That you do not love the word of God and spend time is a sign that is not a priority for you. Hallelujah. How amiable are your words, O Lord. They are my meditation day and night. You know, many of us do not understand the dynamics of how the written word will translate into making, improving the quality of your life. Predominantly because we have not been taught. Hallelujah. I spend a major portion of my life and time building upon the word. Because the word will give me what people are chasing after. The light breaks from the word. I sit under the word, scrolling from page to page, searching for spiritual principles and mysteries. My son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from thy heart, thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He says they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh. Has the word of God become ultimate and final authority over your life? This is the question God is asking us. Many of us live as if we are not Christians. You live as if you are children of the devil. But when we come to church, we behave. Our decisions come from Nigerian films and advices from friends. The word of God is always the last resort for many people. When they've tried every other junk and it does not work. You meet somebody who is going through a predicament in his life and recommend scriptures and give the person, they'll go and throw it away. But tell the person, wake up by 12. Stand at the right side of your house. Wear only boxers. Look at the sky for 10 minutes. And say, I am free. I am free. I am free. They'll say, I like it. This is the kind of thing I like. Because we have not been taught the power of God's word. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2. It says, And the Spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Oh, that you will understand the glory. You will understand how organized your life will be. If you will give time to the word of God. Do you know how Satan makes us to run away from God's word? Distraction, distraction, distraction. Many of us are too busy and it's not God that gave you what is occupying you. It is your vain quest for ambition. I'm sorry for anybody who wants to ever be successful in life and will not first sit down with the word of God. The word of God will ease your journey in life. The word of God will guarantee your arrival. In a glorious destiny. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? The word of God. See, when the word of God becomes the basis of anything you do, your results are predictable. Koinonia will never be less than it is now. You know why? There is the working word that is granting us grace. Hallelujah. The supremacy. God is asking you a question tonight. You know, whenever I am saying these kinds of things, ladies think I'm taking them personal, but I, I need to hit you people very well because you are, you are the victims. Some of you are looking at me the way you are looking at me. This word is just jumping and passing. There are all kinds of soils. Why don't you settle with the word? 
One thing, matter, matter. You are concerned and upset about many things. Many of us believe that when you are connected to so 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 and so person, you will be prosperous. Let me tell you ahead of time, you are wasting your time. Because the greatest of any man is a man. Are you listening to me? Some of us are depending on the blessings of our... Some of us are depending on our degrees. Some of us are depending on any... Let me tell you, anything you are depending on that is not the word of God has already predicted your life. Doom. But happy are you when you find it. Happy are you when you find it. Right from the time when there was nobody who would come around, the word of God already showed us a picture. Listen. Am I boring you? Are you receiving something? I'm challenging you because, see, the cruelty of life can only be immune. You can only be immune to it by the revelation of the word of God that you have. There is a whiplash of poverty coming upon people in ways in, in unprecedented dimensions that will turn Christians into beggars. But to you, to you who are within, who will take the word of God serious, you will find out that you are rising. Are you listening to me? I am convinced that no man can take my life. This is no longer a prayer point. It has become my conviction. And there are, there, there are a network of scriptures that have informed this ideology. It's not just because, do you know how many text messages people have sent to me? I saw you dying. I saw them shooting you. I said, let it remain from the realm of the dream there. Because it will never happen. You do not know how immune I am. He said, I will slay a nation for your sake. A nation. Not three armed robbers or four. A nation. Knowledge, 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 knowledge. Hallelujah. Knowledge. This becomes the basis of our authority and audacity in the spirit. I will never become a failure in life. No. See, this is not, I'm not confessing it to make me believe. I'm speaking forth out of the abundance of that which has been settled in my heart. You know why? It's not because Jesus is alive alone. I found the keys. Hiya. He said, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. There are keys, brothers and sisters. If you catch it, you have caught it. The Lord is granting you keys. If you have caught it, you have caught it. I will never, till Jesus comes, taste poverty again. Forever. No, see, I'm sorry if I sound like I'm bragging. No, I have found it. I have found it. He said, I have found... Listen, listen, let me tell you something. He says, look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that bear thee. I called him alone and blessed him. Called him alone. So I decided to understudy the life of Abraham because the Bible tells me he's the biblical portrait of a blessed man. And the Bible says, and Abraham gave Melchizedek a tent. And he blessed Abraham. And he said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. I found in the book of Malachi, he said, Will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? The walking knowledge. I will never rob God of my time. Listen, God gives you 100%. And he says, Give me 10%. To prove that what the blessing I sent arrived to you. So that I can send another one. He said, bring ye all your tithes to my house. 
and prove me now here with say the lord if i will not number one open the windows of heaven number two shower upon you a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive number three and i will rebuke the devourer for your sake and it shall not destroy the fruit of your ground neither shall your vine cast its young before its time he said you shall be called blessed and you shall be a delightsome land luke 6 verse 38 it says give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom he said for with the same measure you give that is the measure you'll be given I found it second corinthians 8 9 says ye know the grace of our lord jesus christ that although he was rich yet for my sake he became poor that i through his poverty might be rich second corinthians 9 verse 8 the bible begins to speak about god loving a cheerful giver hallelujah and then i found in scripture higher he said the gift of a man the gift of a man makes room the gift of a man and i have the greatest gift in me the holy ghost that means forever there will always be room for me when you build your life around the confidence of the word of god you become unbeatable hallelujah koinonia will always remain blessed because i found in hebrews 7 7 it says and without contradiction the lesser is blessed of the greater and without contradiction i found here the secret hallelujah these are the principles that we are working with people will keep coming for koinonia in ways that defy explanation you know why the bible says if i be lifted up so that's the key if i be lifted up not a man of god he say i i paul can plant apollo can water but increase is not given to any man hmm. hallelujah I found the secret of the anointing this is not guesswork uh -uh. the secret of the anointing is not just impartation psalms 89 i have found my servant david when it comes to the things of the anointing you must be a servant this is the secret of revelation and power revelation chapter 1 verse 1 it says the revelation of Jesus Christ which is sent unto his servant John that he should show unto his servants the things that must happen. Joshua chapter 1 the Lord speaking to Joshua said Moses my servant is dead. He said and as I was with Moses so I will be with you. What is your life standing upon? What is your life standing upon? Hallelujah. What is your life standing upon? Luke 10, 19. Forever settles the issue of the devil. He says, Behold, I give you power to tread upon snakes, scorpions, and all the powers of the enemy and nothing. That's why I cast out devils and sleep like a baby. The devil that would distract me has not yet been manufactured in hell. I remember saying this years ago and somebody told me, you are making too much noise, so let the person see now. What is the framework of your confidence in the spirit? Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? The Bible says, I fear no evil. Why? For thou. You see why we talk about the presence of God? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me, not in the absence, but in the presence of my enemies. They need to be witnesses. You anoint my head with oil, and that anointing causes my cup to overflow. Hallelujah. I found the secret of commanding increase in any land 
the bible says let the people praise thee oh god let the people praise thee and then the earth shall yield her increase see you are limited by your knowledge listen to me you are limited you are limited by your knowledge if you will contend many of us need to sit with the word of god and cry we have a praying generation which is great but we have a wordless generation too we have men and women who can pray for 12 hours but they cannot sit with the word for three hours and we have been made to believe that the moment you can pray and attack spiritual forces they will go you try it this is why the prayer life of many people has no fire and it has no power because their prayer is is not consistent with the word of god jesus spent three years doing a teaching ministry with his disciples after that he released them and they shook their world they sat under his feet for three solid years day and night i write these things to you oh excellent theophilus all that jesus began to do and teach all that jesus began to do and teach your success can be predictable it can be consistent it can be stable hallelujah i listed all the areas in my life that i know will be relevant for my human existence and i started supporting them with solid scriptures there's no area of my life that i've left to chance hallelujah do you have a working knowledge of the truth have you found truth that you are running with what are you running with many of us are running with luck and guesswork how are you going to know that that is the job based on salary based on what see the life of many believers is is too unpre is too is too slippery we are not solid in our work this is why we dwindle at anything whatever is happening everybody's running something else is happening everybody's running when will you gain stability in the spirit hallelujah we have a prosperous ministry forever because the bible says blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked these are the conditions so fruitfulness and productivity is not just dash there are conditions blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stand in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of scoffers he said but his delight is in the law of the lord and on that law doth he meditate day and night what is the result he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water which yield its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither and then he says whatsoever he doeth prospers whatsoever he doeth prospers whatsoever he doeth prospers Everybody say the word is final authority over my life. See, some of you want increase, you want joy, you want grace, but you are obviously working against your own success because you are working against the world. Many of you are you want prosperity, but you are so greedy. There are some battles Satan cannot fight. The only way Satan can fight your harvest is to fight your seed time. I see a lot of people who want to be rich. You get angry when you see rich people. 
you get angry when you see blessed people. As though they are being blessed stopped you from achieving your own. When you see a blessed man who is blessed by kingdom principles, look at his giving life. The Bible says, as far as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and winter, or cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Proverbs 3 from verse 9 and 10, he said, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase. He says, So shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy vats to overflowing. Many of you are greedy and selfish and self-centered. That's why you will never get the blessings of the Lord. It doesn't matter how many miracle services you attend. Don't be offended. I'm teaching you the principle that will help you. Hallelujah. Do not envy a giver. He cannot help his situation. He will remain blessed. Hallelujah. As a ministry, we do not owe God one naira. By the grace of God. As soon as the offerings are collected, before anything is done with the money, I'm sharing these principles with you because I want it to work in your life. 10% of it is taken on to God. We can't stop being blessed. It doesn't matter what your personal feeling is about it. Hallelujah. You can be anointed and keep growing in the anointing. Are you listening to me? There are many people who can be anointed and full of fire. And then one day you find out that they are no longer anointed. No. That's anointing that came as a result of impartation. Without knowledge to back it. I can lay hands on you and you begin to do supernatural things. But your lack of knowledge will mislead you. So it must be supported by knowledge. Say after me, I contend for knowledge. Say, I contend for knowledge. I don't see limits in my life. This is not because I read a motivational book. I found out in God's word that if thou canst believe, all things are possible, not to a Christian, to him that believeth. If thou canst believe, that's the only barrier. If thou canst believe, The Bible says, when they shall say there is a casting down, for us our story is different. We will say there is a lifting up. I believe this. I believe this. Hallelujah. Psalms 128 says, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. It says, His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. And all of that, he begins to speak. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. The fear of the Lord. That means the fear of the Lord has a lot of blessings. If you do not fear the Lord, why will you want his blessings? See, this is what people like David Oyedeko and other people call the covenant. They call it the covenant because once you play your part, God is committed to his part. Hallelujah. I found in life that when you solve people's problems, you become blessed forever. This is the secret of generational impact and influence. Many people think money makes a ministry. Impact brings blessings. When you bless people, they are too grateful to leave you the way they met you. Hallelujah. The Bible says the fire upon the altar shall not go down. That's why we will not stop praying. That's why I won't stop fasting. And then shall thy light break as the morning. 
access to unlimited insight and illumination of the spirit. Now that you know these things, do you live by it? Do you practice it? Can I tell you something? Many of you have, have been accusing God. But sit down this night and you will know God is fair. You are the one who has been killing yourself. Is that true? Many of you know that. No, look, God is just. He told Cain, he said, if you do like your brother, will he not be accepted? That's what he told Cain. Cain was angry that his brother's sacrifice was accepted. I was watching Dunamis TV and I saw Paul and Encher's wife. He was not around. And she was ministering in their healing and deliverance service. And I just sat down. I said, no, God, you are just. There is no partiality in you at all. If I do what that man is getting, I will get his result. Full stop. Period. Rather than criticizing people, especially for those of you who in your small campus fellowship or this and that, you are already used to talk. Why don't you find out what they are doing? This, you see, let me tell you something. I say this with all humility. Don't misunderstand me. We have this ugly pride in the body of Christ. Huh? That we are all equal. Now, I believe we are equal. Listen, we are equal in Christ. But we are not equal in knowledge. We are not equal in grace. There are some people that have been given authority by reason of certain things. Doing business with the spirit in deep waters. The church of God has this ugly, arrogant way. When I see a man that carries something I don't have, I sit down. I don't come to him and say we are colleagues. Uh -uh. I sit down. When I'm listening to Oyedeko or any of this man of God, if you come, if you distract me, I will, I will drive you away. Because I'm receiving. Hallelujah. I wanted to know the secret of wealth. Because I knew it was going to be necessary because of the kind of life and ministry God is giving. And I didn't want to live this false life. Of begging people from left, right, and center. I found out from scripture that God sent me to be a blessing to you, not a burden. I can't yoke you with my responsibilities. It's good to go and meet the one who called me. And so I went and met God. Do you know what? God told me he's not going to teach me anything. I should find vessels. That's where I found that scripture. He said, look unto Abraham, your father. In other words, God said, there are people who are commanding results in this area. Search for them. Be humble enough to sit under their feet and learn. And I said, fine. Got their materials, got their books. Sat down with an open heart and light broke from my spirit. Hallelujah. The word of God. I remember one time I was I was praying and I, I, I slept off and I had a dream. In the dream, Bishop Oedeko was sitting down and I came. And from my wallet, I took some money and I was dropping at his feet. When I took that money and I was dropping at his feet, he looked at me. He said, there's still some in the wallet. I should bring out everything. I brought out everything and I dropped it. And then he brought out a carton just out of a drawer. It was full of all kinds of currencies, mint. And he looked at me and the Holy Ghost spoke to me expressly. He said, the keys of prosperity that I gave Bishop Oyedeko, I have given it unto you. My life is a product of encounters that are a derivative of the word. Follow them. This is what I found in the word. Who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Hallelujah. So what do you need? Knowledge. Knowledge, my brothers and sisters. Knowledge. Knowledge. Could it be that that's what you need to live where you are to the next level? He told the woman, 2 Kings 4, he said, what do you have in your house? Listen to what she said. She said, a little. This was her, this was her problem. It was not the oil. The cruise holding the oil was little, so it could not do much for her. 
And the prophet told her what her solution is. He said, if you increase capacity, the oil will increase. Knowledge. Where I am today. Oh, if you see the way I cry before God. What you see today is our mindset of yesterday. Wait and see what God is doing with us today. I tell you, there is, there is, there is, an, there is a wave that is coming. Indescribable. Because of the infallible word of God. I can stake my life at this word unto death. Fathers have gone before us. They took this same scripture. Who through faith subdued nations. They shut the mouths of lions. People did great things. A man of God went to Lagos. The first time he went to Lagos, he slept under the bridge. But right now, the world is celebrating that man. He's called Archbishop Sam Amaga. This world turned ordinary. Listen, listen to me. This world took ordinary people. Show me what you are doing with this word and let me tell you what your future will be. I don't need to be a prophet. Just show me. Let me see the value you are placing on this word. I can tell you what your tomorrow will be like. I respect the word. I don't just believe it. I submit to the governing authority of the word. I love the word. I love the word. Hear me tonight. I'm giving you a big key epignosis i will find out the working knowledge concerning my finances the working knowledge concerning success in ministry the working knowledge concerning intimacy with the holy spirit the working knowledge concerning miracles signs and wonders the working knowledge concerning church growth the working knowledge concerning generational impact the working knowledge concerning leadership I found my way out of every nonsense in life. It's only a matter of time. I found my way. I found my way. Not when the word of God is here for me. Not when the Holy Ghost. I found my way. I'm telling you. Every factor notwithstanding. This is how you can rejoice in the Lord. He said rejoice in the Lord. And again I say rejoice. Say after me, I'm blessed. Let me tell you how you are blessed. You're not just blessed because a man of God saw that you marry a rich man. You are blessed because the gift of God's word has been given unto you. And the Holy Spirit. The word of God has not gained supremacy in the life of God. How many of us tonight can look at yourself and in all sincerity say, I'm living by the word. If you are living by the word, you will pack out of that guy's house. Because the Bible says, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. That you are in his house, you are not married, you are sitting comfortably. You are violating the word. Don't think you will get the same result. See, people, let me tell you, the mercy of God does not override his justice. Hallelujah. You can't be smoking and drinking. Roaming around and giving God 10 minutes. And there is somebody laboring in the spirit. You think you will get the same result? No, sir. Straight to the point. Let me just tell you. It won't happen that way. Hallelujah. There are some of you in relationships with an unbeliever. This guy does not love God. What does the Bible say? He said, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. He said, what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? And what communion has light got to do with darkness? You know it, but it has not become a working knowledge. You have not submitted to the influence of that word. Are you listening to me? It is the word that you know. He said, ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. When you grow in character, when you grow in grace, the Bible says grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge. It takes knowledge for grace to be multiplied. And the more your knowledge, the more your peace. He said grace and peace, shalom, 
be multiplied unto you. The supremacy of God's word. The second thing I want to touch on quickly and then we'll pray. Is the renewal of the mind. The principle of renewal. Please write it. When the Lord asked me to share this, I was very excited. Because somebody needs to hear it. Proverbs 23 verse 7. Proverbs 23 verse 7. Proverbs 23 verse 7. Who is like you, lion and the lamb, seated on the throne? Mountains bow down, every ocean roars to the Lord of Lords. Praise Adonai. From the rising of the sun to the end of every day. Praise Adonai. All the nations of the earth, all the angels and the saints sing praise. It says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Look at me. Look at me. Those of you in business and entrepreneurial things, those of you who are called into that area and have read business books, there is the fundamental law. In fact, in ancient times, they hid this law from people and they call it the law of attraction. Hallelujah. This is a business law. It really does not apply to us in that context. But I, I'm just saying that to teach you something. Some of the wealthiest people in the world believe that it is this singular law that has brought them this. The law of attraction. Praise the Lord. And the law of attraction says that every man is a living magnet. That you attract to your life the things that are consistent with your most dominant thoughts. Hallelujah. Listen. Very powerful. So every time a nation wanted to conquer another nation, what happened? They kept creating through the media the things that will make them think failure and defeat. When they find out that they've taught failure so much, the army will go and conquer them. It worked like magic. This was the principle Adolf Hitler used to conquer. This was a principle that the Roman Empire used. I've done an extensive research on it. The law of attraction. But the, the, the danger of the law of attraction is they do not give credit to God. They give credit to the earth. They believe that the earth is a living entity and it can read people's thoughts. That there are magnetic waves that leave you through your thoughts and it has an attracting power. Science students, this is what Isaac Newton tried to study that he called the universal law of gravitation. Remember? That's what he was trying. He was trying to show the union between two different bodies. The earth and any other body. That there is an attraction between them. So people called it the law of attraction. So that means, according to them, that everything, this is what gave birth to this principle of visualizing. You see that? They say visualize. Do this and that. You know, visualize. Um, see yourself successful. See yourself great. See yourself this and that and that and that. That's why the rich people have certain ideologies. Let me tell you where they took it from. That's why I took you to that scripture. Proverbs 23. Hallelujah. It says, for as he what? God equates a man's thoughts with his life. Are you seeing it there? He says, for as he thinks, where? That is how he will become. I'm teaching you a powerful principle. Ah, so my thoughts. Run with me, Genesis 11. Let's look at it quickly. We're going to pray. I want to show you how powerful this principle are. That, that your most dominant thoughts have already started living before they manifest. Genesis 11. Verse 2. Let's just start from verse 2. And it came to pass, this was the rebuilding of the Tower of Babel. Listen, please. It came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain land of Shina and they dwelt there. Verse 3. And they said to one another, Come, 
let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly they had bricks for stone and they had asa for mortar verse 4 and they said come let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach the heaven listen nimrod was creating an imagination in them he was telling them this is what we are going to do let's occupy ourselves with these thoughts are you listening to me i want to show you something powerful about the renewal of the mind and let us make a name for ourselves lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth verse 5 but the lord came down listen so this was their imagination is that true the bible says the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built stop had they built it look at what god is saying is in your bible it says let us see what the men had they are finished building it this is from god's perspective look at it now is it not on the stage they said let us start the bible says god came to look and said, these guys have finished this thing as a man thinket in his heart this is a powerful principle listen if if you catch this you will change your life and destiny it says let us see what the sons of men had built ha! question they've not started this was the board meeting to discuss but what did god see in the realm of the spirit this is what the business people call the law of attraction that your thoughts are living to a point when it crystallizes not even the devil can stop it let's finish up hmm. and the lord said listen indeed the people are one and they have all one language listen he said and this is what they begin to do Ah, uh -uh, stop i thought he said you have already built it is that true follow me help me now koinonia now he's saying this is what they begin to do ah. he just saw from the realm of the spirit that they are finished but they were about to start it in the physical he says now nothing that they have proposed to do will what was satan mentioned in this equation even god testified he said if we don't stop these people they will do it how did god stop it seven verse seven come now this is god oh let us go there and confuse their language this was god said look the only remedy is to break this unity give them divided languages divided thoughts so it is a language that create thoughts are you following me now hey. i'm trying to establish something help me believers god did not say let's go and change their mind he said let's just change their language when their language changes their minds will change and this building will crumble from the spirit I show you a mystery you will live an unbeatable life let us change their language hmm. romans 12 i'm excited may somebody catch something tonight oh god god wants you to change your situation may somebody catch something tonight Verse 1. I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, listen. When it comes to renewal, Paul is beseeching brethren by them. He said, This is too important. I have to beg you that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. He says, Do not be patterned. The word world here is the Greek word aeon. The thinking pattern. That comes with this age the thinking pattern it says do not be conformed to the thing that means there is a thought process that this world brings and if you stay like that you will never be successful are you listening to me you see the reason why many people are failures before you are born there is a system that has been organized and the media is helping it you don't know listen 
One day I'm going to teach you something called the conspiracy of the rich. And you will see how a lot of people and our media is keeping us where we are. You see how the message of poverty helps you to attract all this nonsense to your life. We think it is a good teaching. The Bible says, as a man thinking. So the Bible says, since your thought is the same, words are what crystallize into your thoughts. Is that correct? For time's sake, we, not, we may not read it, but let me, let me just quote it quickly. Hebrews 11 from verse 1, the Bible says, now faith, verse 1 to 3 actually. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Listen, he said that for by it the elders obtained a good report. Verse 3 says, through faith we understand, through faith that the world, okay, we have it here. Listen, the world was framed by what? Okay, so we see the word here. But how did it happen? So that the things which were not seen, there was something in the mind of God. I'll never be a failure in life. Never. 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 See, don't just get emotional about this. I found my place. I did a teaching years ago called the law of atmosphere. I create only the atmosphere that allows the things of heaven to find expression. So you are dropping blue films in your house. You are dropping cigarettes and wondering why demons are, are oppressing you. Are you seeing that? Many of us laugh. You think it's nice. You don't find me using vulgar words. Oh, it's not for people like us. We are... No, 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 no. I'm guarding my heart. That's the next scripture. Quickly. Proverbs 4 verse 23. Say, guard your heart with all diligence. Seeing then that your heart is such a vital point in your destiny. The Bible says for us, one to read. Read it. It's projected. One to read. We're going to pray. Keep your heart, listen. The word there is create a garrison around it. The way you fence it. Create a garrison. Protect your heart. Don't let anybody come and pollute your heart with nonsense. That's how they are killing your life. When you come to my place, there is a protocol. You don't speak anyhow. I will walk you out. Hallelujah. You see why the Bible says, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. What does it mean to consider? Brood on it. Think about it. Many of us are experts at thinking about yesterday. Oh, if only I did this. And they warned me. Now that it has happened, come. Forgetting the things that are behind, I press on towards the mark of the high calling. Everybody say the renewal of the mind. So I take the word of God, which is an ideology, and I begin to change my mindset. Everybody say change my mindset. Yes, yes, yes. That's what begins to happen to you. So they gave birth to you in a house. There's, it, was, it was just firewood that they were gathering. You've been carrying that mindset. Suddenly you begin to find in God's word that there is a greater life. There is a better place for you in Christ. Your mind begins to wrestle it. People tell you you are good for nothing. Then you keep finding another testimony. But whose report will you believe? I choose to take the word of God. The entrance of thy word giveth light. The entrance, not the reading. The entrance, the entrance, not the reading. And understanding unto the simple. Day and night I meditate on what the Bible has said about me. And I believe it. I'm above principalities and powers. I am convinced about this. I am above. I am above. Completely above. I am blessed. I am prosperous. My heart is already totally committed to God. There is no backsliding. It's not part of the testimony of my life. It won't happen. No. I walk circumspectly. I walk by the wisdom of the Spirit. 
Am I challenging somebody? Epignosis. The walking applicable knowledge of the truth. That you can apply in your life. And you receive results. What situation are you in right now? Do you know that if you take the word of God, you can create a glorious destiny? Many of you are waiting for Nigeria to change your destiny. Let me tell you ahead of time, there is a root shock waiting. We are the ones who are coming to change them. Lift up your Bible if you have one. Say, this is the word of God. I believe it. I am convinced that it is not a lie. That it is truth. It is able to give me a new mindset. A new ideology. A new thought life. That will translate into a glorious destiny. I declare that I believe nothing that is not consistent with the word. I obey nothing that is not consistent with the word. Say I live the word. I talk the word. I believe the word. I act the word. I think the word. When this becomes your life, he said they are life to those who find them. I'll never break down and just run and you will not come and see me on Friday. You say, why? I say, ah, there's something wrong. No. See, the word has become my new eyes. I have put the word in my eyes. It has, I am blind to any other thing that is not the word. Can you see the solution, not the sickness? Can you see the breakthrough, not the limitation? Do you see yourself rising? Listen, this is powerful. It's the principle of renewal. Sister, do you see yourself marrying? Or you are just sitting down and camping around your dream and saying in the dream, I saw a wedding, my husband was there, I was not there. Change it! Amazing the things we allow to govern our lives. Casting down every yetzah, every imagination. I cast them down. Because if I don't cast them down, they will become my reality. I refuse. I am not poor. I may have taken Gary. I refuse to meditate upon that. I'm well favored. This is what the constitution of the kingdom tells me. I'm above only. It says my part is as a shining light. It shines brighter. I don't care even if my life is nose diving. As far as I'm concerned, I'm shining brighter. I have the spirit of faith. There's no unfruitfulness in my life. There's no barrenness in my life. I have the spirit of faith. I'm convinced about its reality. I remain anointed forever. No devil, no Jezebel can take it down. It came by revelation. It is sustained by revelation. Hallelujah. Koinonia keeps moving from glory to glory because the Bible says whatsoever is born of God. Whatsoever is born of God. Whatsoever. Epignosis. If you find yourself doubting the word of God at any point, you truly did not believe it. Are you listening to me? That's the proof. There are many people that only believe God's word based on the result it shows. If it does not seem to show any result, you start looking for alternatives. It means you did not believe it. Look at me. When a woman fails to give birth, does she run to go and cross check if she's a man? Why? She's settled that there is something wrong. But to ask whether she's a woman or not is not an issue. Hallelujah. When a man is impotent, does he run to the hospital and say, Doctor, verify, paradventure. I'm a winner. I'm a champion. Thank God I don't need another man's confession to build my life. It's entirely up to me and God. 
So this excludes my enemies out of the equation of my success. I'm happy about this. He said, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. He said, oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Rise up on your feet. Begin to pray in one minute. Shakata parekate balaka posataya. Come on, pray in tongues in one minute. Mande praskata pekata prakoso patataba. Whose report will you believe? Jembria takata libosa. If thy eye be single, thy body will be full of light. If thy eye be single, as a man thinketh in his heart, so will his reality become. Come on, pray in one minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Can I tell you something? The believer is a mystery to creation. The believer is a mystery. If you don't believe this, you will die and watch others rise and it will not be God's fault. This is why you are hearing it. Prayer point number one. We are going to pray. Listen. You are going to say, Lord, I submit my life to the authority of your word. Listen. Some of you tonight, may God break that stubborn heart that will not bend to the word. Some of you, as, as small as you are, you are so stubborn. You won't bend to the word. You know what the Bible says. And there is grace already released to you. Take advantage of it. Stay with the word. Build yourself upon the word. Stay with the word. Run away from anything that is not of God. It, anything that is not of God is reprogramming your mind to failure. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I submit to your word. I submit to your word. Let him that steal, steal no more. I live by your values, uncompromising, by your values, your word created the heavens and the earth. I'm giving you a key that will make you blessed, that will make you powerful, that will give you grace for generational impact. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word shall not pass away. My word shall not fail. Cry unto God. Cry unto God. Your word governs my life. Your word governs my conversation. I submit. I submit. I submit. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Listen. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, what have you been allowing? What words have you been allowing to shape your mind? You listen to all kinds of corrupt and ungodly music. The problem is, they are mind builders. They control your thoughts. Hallelujah. So the blood of Jesus is your basis for receiving breakthroughs. And when we stand up to pray and we begin to challenge the gates of hell, you don't stand weak and you are wondering and say, do you know nobody in my family has crossed this barrier? You say, well, I couldn't cross it, but that blood created a divide and I must walk past it. Look, let me tell you. The Bible says, let me show you something. Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah. Let's look at Isaiah. 
Isaiah, help me, Holy Spirit. Isaiah 41, verse 21. I saw this scripture in 2004 and it changed my life. Isaiah 41, 21. Everybody read. One to read. Look, God is speaking like a judge in a law court. Are you getting me? He said, produce your cause. He said, bring forth your strong reason. Give me a scriptural basis to bless you. Justify your qualification to step into a new level. You don't say that just by jacking yourself. You lift up the blood and say, this is my basis. This is my basis. Upon the strength of what your son did, he has given me access to health. He has given me access to the blessing of the Lord. Praise God. Number two, an encounter with the word of God brings you to agree with God. It brings you to agree with God. We call that, listen, we call that alignment and transformation. Alignment and transformation. Somebody come. Please look for that scripture for me. With God, all things are possible. Right? Somebody come, anybody. Watch this. An encounter with the word of God. Remember I told you in our teaching yes, um, last week, right? The reality of what? Spiritual laws. I told you that no man can activate any law by himself. Is that true? A spirit entity, either the Holy Spirit or another spirit must walk with you. So in the realm of the spirit, partnership is the order of things. You cannot do anything alone. Either a demon spirit or the spirit of God must assist you. So the Bible says, you are yet to find it. Matthew, Matthew 19, 26, media. Are you getting my point now? The problem with many people is that we are far apart. This is where God is standing. This is God's mindset right he says as far as the heavens are above the earth so are my thoughts my ways is that true so this is god standing and he's saying come and join me but she's standing here and saying lord i need you to help me and god is saying it's against the law you have to find come i supply grace you take advantage of that grace and come when we are together so the bible says with god come with God all things become possible so without God nothing becomes possible so that cancer with God becomes possible you see that are you getting my point that admission with God the Bible says with God so koinonia miracle service with God will produce result the, 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 this is the mystery this is the mystery of impact with God. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Bible says he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed. Why? For God was with. The Bible says, and the Lord walking with them. This is the mystery. Divine assistance coming into God's realm. You no longer become an enemy of your own destiny. And we call that alignment and transformation. That's one of the major ministries of the word. So the word of God begins to advocate a superior mindset. Higher and greater than the ideology you've held on to. It may be cultural. It may be intellectual. Right? It may be societal. But when the word of God begins to judge you. It shows you the excellency of God's own mindset. And it's up to you to say, Lord, although this is all I've believed my, all my life. For instance, there are people who are here with certain terminal diseases 
and they have been told they've lived all their lives believing they didn't even come for the miracle service for that specific case to be healed they came for something else right because according to their mind it has not yet become a possibility that god can address that issue but when he looked at the tomb where lazarus had been buried he said roll away the stone prove that i can raise lazarus back by you going to open up that case that you have closed praise the lord i believe god i'm a believer i truly believe him proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 says trust in the lord with all your heart it says lean not on your own understanding the next verse says in all your ways not some it didn't say talk to him he says acknowledge him you acknowledge a man by giving him preference he says and as a result he will direct your path next verse says be not wise in your own understanding he says fear the lord and turn away from evil hallelujah very important so with god this lady may be weak unable to do anything but with god with god she may be broke suffering nothing is working but all of a sudden she comes and she finds out that there is he that scattered and yet increases. There is he that withholded more than his meat and tends to poverty. She begins to learn the ways of God that he can open up the heavens. That it is the blessing of the Lord. Not your business. It is the blessing. The blessing makes everything you do prosper. That's why it says whatsoever he doeth prospers. So it's not about what you are doing. It's about the spiritual factor that supports what you are doing. So, with God, with God, she suddenly becomes powerful. All of a sudden, doors of favor open up to her because she has chosen to leave her old mindset and come to God. Listen to me, tonight, the first miracle you need to have is to give up on your ideologies and say, Lord, I'm tired. Because your life is a reflection of your ideologies. I don't care what the situation is. I told us last week that your environment will eventually become a reflection of what your belief system and your ideology he said let this mind philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 let this mind the word let there is permit permit this mind please i know that you came from kaduna state and kaduna state there may be a way you thought about in your village i know that you came from from the east and there is a way that they thought i know that you come from the west i know that you come from katsina tonight will you choose to become a citizen of the kingdom by adopting the ideologies of the king subscribe to a new government every government has an economic system every government has a political system every government has a welfare system if you've been evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more shall your heavenly father? But that law is only operational for the sons of the kingdom. Hallelujah. The word of God brings you into alignment. Listen, when I begin to study the word of God, or when she begins to study the word of God, and she finds out that there is an ideology that she has that fights against the word of God, you will be foolish to argue with the word of God. The word of God predates our existence. It has been tried through dispensations. The word of God is a description of his character. His operation with man. And I told you that the efficacy of the word transcends Genesis 1. It's beyond that. It predates Genesis 1. I told you Genesis 1 is not the first creation. We've, we've settled that, right? Job 38. Those of you who are just coming this is koinonia get the series hallelujah that there, there is a lot of creation genesis 1 uh, isaiah 38 begins to give us how the foundation of the earth was created praise the lord the question i'm asking you is i know you want god to bless you but could it be that the devil that needs to go out today is not the one in your village is the one that has stayed in your mind like a strong the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To what? 
the pulling down of strongholds casting down every yazar imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of christ and bringing every thought to the obedience of christ praise the lord so we have been given a poverty mentality as africa we have been taught that until you are 25 or 30 don't think about finances don't think about blessing don't think about empowerment and you are told that you are too young to carry the power of god or you are a lady you shouldn't carry the power of god these are the ideologies that cosmos markets to us but you must refuse it say i refuse shout it i refuse, I refuse. Mm. you must refuse it you must refuse it who told you you were naked who told you you were naked i honor the doctors but do you know that there are many people who who have several sicknesses but it never affects them because they do not have a medical report to validate it you went to check headache they said my brother this thing is more than headache you mean you would have died now we have a lot of doctors here doctors i love you praise the lord but now when you check and they tell you huh, do you know that your liver is almost in fact you say you you mean it hi from that time your liver starts paining you physically right and then the doctor tells you you have two weeks to live all of a sudden somebody says there's an opportunity god is lifting us they let him lift you there i'm dying i believe the report of the lord i believe the report of the lord. see listen you don't see with your eyes you see through your eyes there is a spiritual agency for sight you only see through these physical eyes it's not what you see with. they are just the physical components that enable your true spiritual eye to see and paul prayed that that eyes be flooded with light praise the lord so we need alignment that's why you can pray for people Pray for them, lay hands on them, do whatever you want to do. Did you know that sometimes you finish praying and then the people walk right back because their mindset betrays what God wants to do in their lives. That's what happened to the nation of Israel. Right? Everything you have told Moses we will do oh, after two weeks. They say, Kai, a, a delegation comes and they say, Moses, we, we need an explanation and bring Baal. Make something for us that we can see. This mysterious God who comes with smoke, we don't know this one. Please, make something we know. They limited God in the wilderness. A man's mindset can limit God as mighty as he is. I refuse to limit you. I refuse. Number three. The word of God, an encounter with the word of God shows you your part of the deal it shows you the part you have to play to commit god to a performance never forget this there is a part that you have to play brothers and sisters every promise in scripture requires a partnership on your own part deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 it says, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day. Right? And then it talks about um, you being exalted above all the nations and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. If there is a condition. Isaiah 119. If ye be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Not if ye be hungry and desperate. If ye be what? Willing. There is a condition there is a condition there are always conditions so an encounter with the word reveals to me my part of god's prosperity package lord you want to bless me what is my role right i want to step into levels of the anointing the word of god shows me is see reading the word is like walking in your promised land it says walk left and right see everything as far as your eyes have seen so you read studying the word of god is like touring your promised land 
and you come back and say, Lord, as I read, I found this and that. And God says, all right, here's the condition. Everything is yours for a taking. You can enter a restaurant. Immediately you enter the restaurant, you see a lap of an agri chicken and you start smiling. But you came there with 100 naira. There is a condition. You want to be a possessor. You want to make that thing become a present reality. There is a price tag. Nobody stops you. There's no policeman to stop you. But you can watch it like a museum and salivate and watch right and nothing happens you may be 30 years but a little baby will come with his father and he say mommy i like this and whatever he likes keep giving it to him the container did not refuse to open your part i know you are laughing because i spoke about food but get the revelation because the issue in your life is more than food praise god Oh God, change my story. God says, come let me show you your part of the deal. He said, God, I don't want you. Are, you have died for me. Mm -mm. Listen, listen, listen. Making the word of God work in your life, making that which he has done to work in your life will require a participation on your own part. Please understand this. Praise the Lord. Are we following? So these three things. Tonight, as you are seated here, there are some of us, the reason why certain levels of breakthrough have not come into our lives is because we have not been able to support our claims in prayer with a basis. You have, you have always every power challenging me. You better leave. Because of what? Why should they leave? Do you know what brought them in the first place? They were there before you were born. So I came to Koinonia. Every demon, I'm tired of you. That's not what drives them. You, you don't, they don't go because you are tired. 38 years, that man was lying down at a pool. That wicked spirit did not say, Kai, 37, 38, oh yeah, let me allow you, you have tried. You would have remained there forever. In five minutes, five minutes, meaning time does not change anything. Light is what changes things. It will change tomorrow, you are wasting your time. Arise and shine, not because you are tired of sitting, Isaiah 60, for thy light is come. Are you getting blessed? So there are some of us here, what you need is to understand a revelation of what Jesus Christ has done. You think the reason why you may get everything is because you are bold or because you are prayed. It's not that. There is a revelation. The blood of Jesus. For years I heard Ren had Bonke talk about the blood of Jesus so much. He, he equated blood and fire. And I didn't, I couldn't quite get it until i found out that blood was a key in the spirit that's why every religion has blood as part of their component this is the one factor that every religion agrees upon blood hallelujah and there are some of us here the problem is our mindset god wants to bless us he wants to lift us but there is a mindset oh i'm a lady oh i'm coming from so so and so i cannot even speak english Oh, this and that and that and that. I've not even gotten admission. Or, oh, me, I just want a little this. Or, I made that and that. Huh? Or, God, I want you to bless me, but it must happen through NMPC. If you are Lord, it must happen through NMPC. They limited God. You're asking God for a cup and he wants to give you an ocean. Hallelujah. That's the problem with the body of Christ. Our faith is what I call auxiliary faith. Faith that is standing on something. Tied to the neck of your uncle. So every time you say, Lord bless me, what you mean is press that uncle's neck until he responds to me. Your faith is not really standing upon the word of God. Your faith, every time you say, Lord, I, 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 I know you are changing my story. What you are simply saying, oh Lord, I know my uncle will not sleep until my... No, no, no. Why don't you give him the option to bring the strategy? And you say, Lord, I don't care how it will be done. I may not see wind. I may not see rain. But one thing I know. Because let me tell you, your strategy is most of the time carnal. But his strategy becomes spiritual. When he gives you a strategy, it may look foolish. But that's the way he has chosen it. Right? Go around Jericho. That's the strategy. Oh, I'm already ahead of myself. The second way to receive a miracle or the second 
platform now first is an encounter with the word of god second is the ministry of prayer the ministry of prayer is part of the equation to receiving a miracle there must be the ministry of prayer it does two things number one prayer challenges the forces of darkness fighting against the manifestation of the promise in your life ephesians 6 verse 12 the bible clearly tells us that we are not alone in this world we have strangers who are trying to escort us every day every time wicked spirits stratified in different cadres right so you are always not alone the devil attempts to seek entrance into different dimensions of your life and given the opportunity he will wreck your life the goal to mock the testimony of god in your life praise the lord so there are giants on every mountain please don't let anybody fool you there are giants on every mountain if you get into a mountain and the door is already open somebody already killed the giants but there were giants there for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities powers rulers of darkness spiritual wickedness in heavenly places the stratification of the demonic kingdom so between you and your breakthrough there are giants it takes the ministry of prayer hallelujah when you pray you authorize heaven to look into your situation because god is not committed to step into your situation without your asking him to genesis 1 26 from the day he said let them have dominion but god is supposed to know now doesn't he love me well it will not change the bones kept staring at ezekiel until something happened praise the lord you come for miracle service and you find out that as the word is coming like this there are still people seated oppressed of demons right some of these demons are hearing what i'm saying now they are just shaking but they are not going yet let's see if we will go must we really go yes by the time we begin to pray we activate the energy the force right it's a force of compliance it brings everything to the obedience of christ so that's why you need to pray you pray to command the forces of darkness that are stopping your access to bow number two this is an even greater reason why we pray prayer reveals the exact and the unique strategy to bring the promise to manifestation please never forget this when you pray in the place of prayer god reveals to you his unique strategy for you so you have walked through scripture and you have seen that god has told you that you are to walk in breakthrough but now the bible may not give you the nitty-gritty of what to do in your unique situation prayer when you begin to pray the spirit of god begins to search the mind of god concerning your situation and the bible says how that he searches all things and he prays according to the will of god so you begin to pray and then the lord tells you okay now this is the strategy you are going to meet benga benga will introduce you to femi and femi will introduce you to prof that's how the miracle will come it is a strategy for only you somebody will do it and fail are you seeing why prayer is powerful this is this is am i blessing you in my opinion i think this is already a miracle for somebody i'm showing you the loopholes some of us have seen the promise you have agreed with god but the problem is the strategy in ancient times kings won war not on the strength of their army but the dexterity of their strategy 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 so joshua stood still and god began to give him the strategy he said joshua this is how we we'll throw this wall down walk around seven times did you ever see that repeated in the bible because it was a strategy right he told gideon take the people by the riverside and let them take water study the way they take water you will use it as a separation strategy somebody has come tonight to receive strategy lord how do i complete this house you calculated your salary based on your salary to take 10 years and god says i can show you a strategy 
the Bible says, then was the secret revealed unto Daniel. A wicked king slept in the night, dreamt and forgot it and was going to punish people for his forgetfulness. Right? And a man called Daniel. One of the greatest prayers that I've been praying in this season is Lord's strategy. It is all about strategy. I'm telling you. God will show you something that does not make sense but is his strategy for you. Everyone will do it and fail but it's what you will do and you will walk on. Hallelujah. So you look at that business and you are praying and God will say, uh-uh, my strategy for you is take that business out of where you are. Take it to another place. Isaac already knew he had the blessing upon him but he needed a strategy right that's why every time kings would fight they would go and inquire what is the strategy for this war they will not use yesterday's strategy for today's war they will fail woefully and so they'll go should i pursue and the lord will say this is how it will happen like in the days of jehoshaphat put worshipers in front other times he said walk around seven times other times he said just be still get a stone and sit down and watch what i will do strategy question the strategy you are using for your life now who gave you I saw another man do it, you see. He just went and started selling tomato. You see, it, it, God said he will bless you. But what drove you into it? I, I, a man must work. Don't stop those kind of demonic thinking. There must be a strategy. Oh Lord, change my story. I think I'll start selling shoes. Just like that. Just like that. The Bible says, as they began to pray, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas. If they were to choose, they would have carried somebody else. Right now, when we begin to pray, I am convinced that God will begin to reveal strategies for people. Hmm. Strategies on how to make the rain work. Some of you, listen, students, there are students here that all you need is one strategy. There is a course everybody has told you this course and you are face to face with that goliath you've been running away but right you are there now you need a strategy hallelujah there are some of you maybe your project a supervisor may be difficult and god can give you a strategy the strategy may not necessarily be a direct revelation from the spirit it can be light a one scripture imprints in your spirit as you are praying oh god what do i do about this my supervisor suddenly a scripture comes the gift of a man makes room you quickly go and package wine not to bribe the man you are responding to a strategy ordinarily he would have thrown you out with your wine but because you are doing it as a strategy you will laugh and say why did you have to do that what is even your name you have been disturbing me it's a strategy don't give me strategy you will see men do foolish things that don't make sense that's what god told us when when we wanted to start giving access to our messages i went to the lord and the lord told me he said make sure you do not sell any message keep the videos give out the mp3s that's the strategy right you may do it for your ministry and you will lose a lot of money the blessing god has tied for your ministry you would but but it is a strategy it's a strategy when i said lord what is the key to the publicity and the increase and the expansion of this ministry in terms of membership god gave me a strategy it's not a secret mark one two three you may apply it and it may not work for you but that's what the lord gave and this is the mystery behind what you see i like you as you are seated before we stand up to pray in one minute speak to the lord what is the strategy lord my family has been struggling over this issue for years Every time they want to build, there is no money. What is the strategy? Please take what I'm saying seriously. One strategy can change your situation. Not just a strategy you read from a book. One strategy. There is an easier way of doing it. That you have not seen it does not mean it's not there. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal. In 24 hours, by the strategy of the Spirit, He gave victory. Please pray. God has shown you your destiny helper, but He's not paying attention to you. One strategy will answer the question. Pray. 
God has shown you the business he wants you to do. But as it is, you try and try. You need strategy. It's not like you didn't hear God. The ministry of prayer. You have been reading and reading. You did well in 100 level, 200 level. By 300 level, you started moving back because you need to change strategy. You need to go to his majesty to show you strategy 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 please pray for your ministry sister you don't need all the money you think you need what you need is a strategy from the spirit believe me you have tried every idea you know you have tried everything they have told you. Why don't you cry before God? Come on now, pray. Koinonia. Reveal unto me the strategy. My family is suffering. There is witchcraft in my family. They have vowed, but my father will not listen. What is the strategy for the deliverance of my family? Everybody in my family is an unbeliever. But I've seen in visions and dreams that they will all be saved. Between the promise and the manifestation, what is the strategy? Lord, I've applied for job everywhere. Civil defense, immigration, everywhere. What is the strategy? Hallelujah. Strategy. The last thing I'll talk about when we stand up, we're going to do a quick walk. Very, very quick walk. The last step towards the manifestation of a miracle is that you must take action. Take action. I want everybody to listen to me carefully because God is about to speak to us in a very definite way now. I hope you have been blessed so far. Take action. There are two enemies of action that are found from scripture. Number one, fear. Fear. Everybody say fear. Fear is a dangerous and wicked spirit. There are multi-millionaires sitting listening to me now. But fear has stopped them from taking action. There are many families you would have finished building your house since. Not just a bungalow that will kill you. There are people seated here. If you took the step God told you last year, you would have been feeding your family this year. Fear. Tonight, I'm showing you all the things. That there is work to do tonight. Are you getting my point? Everybody shout, I reject fear. Oh, fear does not respect age. Children, fear. Adults, fear. Great men, fear. Macho men, fear intelligent people fear right now africa is afraid nigeria is afraid many people are afraid the dollar is crashing everybody is afraid you don't know what to do right there's fear everywhere when the devil when god tells you get up and build the house this year that house must be built and all you have is hundred thousand and you calculate and you find out that the building will cost seven million and you're laughing you say god don't disgrace me let the people in the village not say i'm stupid Take action. Listen, the Bible says this sign shall follow, not go before. You will never see the hand of God till you stand up and move. This is somebody's, this is a word from God to someone. You have refused to move. Fear. You wrote jam nine times, you didn't get it. God is saying this time you will get it. You say, I'm not ready. I better go to the restaurant and eat food with that money. See that? Fear. Are we getting blessed? Let's look at two scriptures. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. Take it high, please. 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. Please help us, media. Let's really hurry up. We have to hurry up. Because we have some prayer to do. Are you seeing the things that are limiting us? Truly, I am determined this year to see that every one of us has a testimony. If nothing changes in your life this year, then it's your fault. 
but as far as the principles that will guarantee for you to experience the rain by the grace of God I will do my best for God had not given us the spirit of fear put your name there just that first clause one to read one more time Praise the Lord. There are many of our loved ones. 45 years. Brother, are you ready to get out of your father's house? I preached a message in 2008. It was a classic. Come out of your father's house. Thought provoking message to challenge people to leave their comfort zone. There are some of us, 30, 35, 40, who are still a big liability to our parents at home. Or God come out and say, what I have now is 20,000. Come out. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have sown seeds, you are giving. Look, let me tell you, if I am a father, my, when my child gets to a certain age, one day, he will just come and say, young man, in the name of Jesus, I release the blessing upon you. Go out. Out. That's it. I'm, I'm very serious. See, you need to push yourself out of your comfort zone this year. It's not just to say it's the year of the rain stand up and take action are you hearing what i'm saying change change what you have been doing kill fear take action and die doing it queen esther god took her to the palace god removed vashti and brought her for the salvation of israel but when mordecai spoke to her her man is plotting against these people you better go and meet the king she said ah please oh me too is 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 bring they brought me here please i'm not ready to face any embarrassment and mordecai said sit down there in fear paraphrasing sit down there when they finish with us the jews they will now say all of you in this palace bring your bio data and they will find out you are a jew too and they will kill you and she said if i perish i perish this is the year some of us are going to say if i i'm writing that jam again is god speaking to somebody I'm writing that jam again. This is the year. But I tried the business, I failed. You will do it again this year. Master, we have cast, he said, we have cast the net of, how did you put it now? Right? We have toiled all night. He said, nevertheless, at thy word. I was going to get married. The person even did introduction. Later he called and he said he's not doing it again. And now one godly brother is saying, I'm serious. He said, you look like that guy. Stand up and take action. Otherwise you'll sit down and not get married all your life. In the name of Jesus, you will take action this year. Praise the Lord. There are some of us, God is speaking. Fear. Fear. Do you know fear puts people in bondage? more people die there are many sicknesses today that are as a result of fear and worry is that true what you are afraid of has not happened but you are you are almost dying from today now people have started running out of zaria for instance you can go if you want to go what are... <laughs> of course i'm not teaching you to be careless and just roam around but, but oh, come on now people fear everything you are sleeping in the night. You just light. Maybe it's the cloth you hung that just tilted in a way. Say, I, I don't like the way this cloth. Why is it tilting and coming back? Who is there? <laughs> Fear. Fear has made people to say yes when they would have said no. And they committed themselves into things you have no business committing yourself. Fear. One of my friend's father. Listen, true story. One of my friend's father, they would have been the earliest people to start pure water business in Nigeria. When God gave him that idea, it was in a full gospel businessmen's fellowship. Right? The idea came and he laughed. Thai water. Haba. Who will pay for water? Are we idiots? There is stream. There is sun. There is light. There is stove to warm water. And he refused to take action. And certain people took action. Do you think those who took the action are, are crying now? this year you must take a handkerchief as you are crying be moving are you getting my point you must challenge that devil 
you have not broken through certain barriers nobody has ever crossed to the university in your family now you finish secondary school for instance and you're about to take that step and, and everybody said just you have tried you got diploma in, in in software application are you not okay you are ahead yet every time you sleep you see a phd and the devil is telling you cannot move tonight we have come to call that devil a liar in the name of jesus christ say i will take action say i will take action that's right the second thing that stops action is laziness everybody say laziness my goodness our time is gone laziness very important proverbs chapter 10 verse 4 please proverbs 10 verse 4 and then later on, we would look at Proverbs 22 verse 13. Media, please don't forget. Proverbs 10 verse 4. There are some of us, the demon that needs to fly out of our life today, not jump out, fly out and never return, is that spirit of laziness. That inertia to move forward. Some of us, sheer laziness. The Bible says, He become poor that dealeth with what? You never stay around me and you become lazy. I have zero tolerance for lazy people. A young man of 30 years, by 11, 30, 12, he's still snoring on the bed. You will beg for bread, for sure. There is no amount of fasting that will change that if you don't change it. There are many lazy people. We like a wolf, free things. Look, let me tell you, there is a place for diligence if you must see the rain fall upon you this year are we getting blessed he become a poor that deals with a slack hand but the hand of the diligent does what there are some of you you are experts at begging day and night you beg everybody right please bros i beg you get 5k help me next time sister sorry i'm just knowing you don't be embarrassed i need to kill you you degrade yourself because of this devilish attitude of laziness there are grasses in people's houses to go and weed there are things to do but you get up and believe you're a big boy big boy with nothing in your pocket you calm down don't try to look successful pay the price and be successful hallelujah are you getting blessed you must reject laziness there are some students you see how some students live you think you think that they are professors right 10 or 11 exams is in one week and you see the person just strolling with his boxers go and fetch a, 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 a bucket of water lazily he cannot even wait at the tap you turn somebody else's water drag himself to the bathroom come out 30 minutes later Huh? Dirty boxers, dirty singlets, you can't wash it. Laziness all around. You can't get up and sweep your room. And some of our sisters are like that. Who do you want to marry? Tall, dark, and handsome. He must be a millionaire. You think God doesn't have sense? He said, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows. There are many people see look let me tell you sometimes you may see me you see some of the things we are doing and you just don't be deceived by this this ever water if you want it come and carry it there is it there is more than this are you getting my point first thing tomorrow morning we are leaving for katsina it takes work it's not just anointing it takes diligence please you need to talk to yourself and say this year the spirit of laziness i curse you out of my life curse you out an assignment you can do now you sit down and say i will do it on wednesday you get zero right another assignment you get zero they just they they solve the question in class they say just copy it and get 10 marks they say i will do it later on. look procrastination you must attack it this year hallelujah you are working in the office of your boss because you think you come for koinonia and the person you are working for is here. It's no guarantee to be lazy. I will fire you. I employ you. You are not doing what I employ. In the name of Jesus, I will fire you. And you will come back and you will hear me preach. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
there is truly no food for a lazy man. Let me tell you the truth. You must get up and, and be serious about your destiny and work. There are some of us this year, you have no business with relationship. If you are passing and you see any beautiful lady, just say, blood of Jesus, and pass. Because this year is a year to you. Your own reign is coming to give you grace to stand up. No responsible parent will give a daughter to somebody who doesn't know where he's going. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Very important. But I believe that as we contend tonight in this miracle service, it's going to be a very fast walk. For me, I think this, this is it happening to you. If, if we close right now, I believe that you would have left with something. Many of us here belong to this category, this laziness category, right? Because social media, Facebook, Twitter, has and, and, and BBM has massaged our life of laziness. Something you can get up and do. You see a lot of people just to walk from one place to the other. You are taking a bike. Huh? Laziness. It's not like you are in a hurry for anything. You just load your phone and sit down in the afternoon. You are not working. You are not doing anything. You are a liability to everybody around you. And you are just, you are, you are sending Yarrow boys as a student, for instance, to go and buy you Mr. Biggs. Four, five thousand. They bring everything. You lie down with phone that you forced out of your father or mother. And you are making calls in the daytime. Even a worker is not doing that. You ping your life out. And the person you are pinging is in the office making money. You are there struggling. The day you call him, he stops responding to you. Please don't be a liability to anybody this year. Whoever has been ignoring you is because you are becoming a pest. Rise up and begin to be hardworking and you will become friends again. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Especially for the brothers. Brothers, say amen. amen. Let me talk to you for one minute before we start praying. This year, please, please, something must change. There are some people sir five years six years no job not because they they have never taken their cv anywhere um, but my uncle said it now that uncle said it's wicked you came to stay in your friend's house when you stayed in his house he was a student he graduated served and is working you are still staying in his house he has gotten a job you are still staying in his house whoever that friend is drive that person out after miracle service tell him in the name of jesus christ i appreciate you three years is enough time for you to sit down get koinonia messages 2012 13 14 it will liberate you please out of my house sometimes you need to push some people into their breakthrough over pampering destroys hallelujah over pampering destroys there are times you need to get up and challenge yourself they send you money in two weeks you already calling again laziness you won't do anything you hear that there is scholarship free there are many graduates many graduates you win is out they won't apply i think it finished today they won't do anything you said god told you you'll be an entrepreneur huh? and you are not doing anything you've never gotten up to go for any seminar to build yourself you see a seminar you reject it you are not watching anything on youtube you are not going to sit and learn under people you are just sitting down bragging around with nonsense it's what a lot of young people are doing around huh? god blesses you with fifty thousand that can start something that can bless you you use it and buy a suit to prove a point to the people who are busy building their destinies they are not even seeing the point you must change this year in the name of jesus christ fear and laziness we are going to pray three serious prayer points the moment we pray these three prayer points tonight we'll start with the sick people we'll start ministering to the sick people as soon as we pray the three prayer points please begin to write your prayer requests while we minister those outside can you shout hallelujah one more time shout hallelujah the lord will visit you in a mighty way in jesus name praise the lord rise up on your feet and let's pray success is not automatic there are laws there are laws this is our year of the rain god has spoken to us shown us the loopholes 
Lift your hands and begin to thank God for this word tonight. He that he loves, he chastises. Bless his name. Bless his name. Lift your hands inside and outside. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father, for this word. It has come to clean me up. It has come to purify me. It has come to challenge me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Prayer point number one. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Please say it like you believe it. In the name of Jesus. I receive grace to align my mindset to that of the word of God. Every thinking pattern, every thought process that is not of God, I challenge you in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Father, give me the mindset of victory. I'm tired of carrying ideologies some of us have ideologies about church we have ideologies about praying in tongues ideologies about the holy spirit ideologies about prosperity ideologies about miracles ideologies about responsibility about marriage that are antagonistic to the ways of god the first miracle tonight is to pray I submit my mentality I submit my thought pattern please pray pray from your heart I refuse to be limited there is still a place for champions in life there is still a place for the great but you can never rise above your thought pattern. You can never rise above your ideology. You may have held on to it for years. It's time to probe your ideologies. It's time to probe your ideologies. It's time to re-examine your mindset. Hey. Let this mind be in me that was in Christ Jesus. The mindset of victory. I don't see defeat in my life. I don't see defeat with God. I am unlimited. With God, I am unbeatable. With God, I am a champion. Ay, 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 ay. Pray, rejoice not over me, my enemies. For though I fall, yet I will rise again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. You are going to challenge that spirit of laziness are you getting my point fear and laziness let's combine it together say after me in the name of Jesus I challenge every spirit of fear for God has not given me the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind therefore I declare that fear is banished from my life. I refuse to fear. And I challenge laziness. From today, I receive the grace to be diligent. No more laziness. It's time to take action. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Time to take action. 2015 time to take financial steps 2015 time to take spiritual steps 2015 
time to take intellectual steps. Go ahead and pray. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I cause the spirit of fear, fear of death, fear of past failure, every intimidation. Inside and outside, pray, pray. I cause the spirit of fear. I cause the spirit of fear. I'm a champion. I can make it. I can break barriers. I can break barriers. I am well able. I am not weak. I am strong in the strength of the Lord. And I cause laziness. I cause laziness. Laziness to study the word. Spiritual laziness. Mental laziness. Physical laziness. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. As we pray this prayer point, my goodness, I already sense the power of God mighty way that's right as we pray this very prayer point the healing power of god will begin to move hallelujah i'm going to request those who are sick those who came specifically for healing you will find your way as hold on let's pray first before you come i'd like you to come believing that you will part with that sickness forever hallelujah the last prayer point say in the name of jesus Oh God, reveal to me the strategy for possessing my blessing. Reveal to me the strategy in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I cry. What is the strategy? What is the strategy? Come on, pray, Koinonia. I cry unto the spirit of wisdom. Show me the strategy for my prosperity. Show me the strategy for my blessing. Show me the strategy for my lifting. Show me the strategy to get the attention of my destiny helpers. Show me the strategy for the church growth. Show me the strategy for the expansion of my business. Show me the strategy for five points show me strategy for first class show me the strategy to pass the jump show me the strategy show me the strategy to unlock my marital destiny show me the strategy to unlock my marital destiny pray show me the strategy Oh yes, the strategy is revealed in the place of prayer. In the place of prayer. Make sure you are praying tonight. Show me the strategy to open me up to the next level of destiny. Show me the strategy. I'm tired of making mistakes. I'm tired of moving in circles. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. I'm tired of marking time. It's time to break forth. Hallelujah. Begin to pray now and say, God, visit me. We are going to do, the Holy Ghost will do a very quick walk. Very quick walk. Hallelujah. Those who are sick, I'd like you to come up and line up here. Very quickly. If you came here for the miracle service for healing, 
please come and line up ushers help them coordinate them let's have it very quickly while that is happening make sure you write your request there is a mystery of answered prayer in this house make sure please if you have not written your prayer request start writing it i don't care what the situation is i like you to write it and let's drop it before god you are worthy to be glorified you are worthy oh mighty god you are worthy to be glorified you are worthy lord of you in front i know you came here because of the testimonies you have had i want you to know that your situation will not be different are you hearing what i'm saying i want you to believe in the power of god there are certain conditions listen to me there are conditions in this place that are entirely demonic hallelujah it's going to be a fast one i don't know if we we'll have time to take testimonies or not but because there i i really i really really need to rush with time and let's do a lot please if we end late today i apologize in advance we'll do our best to kill time but please wait because god has something to do in your life hallelujah praise the lord father we give you praise it's called a miracle service we thank you for the anointing of the spirit in the name of jesus everybody make sure you participate now if there are, if you have loved ones who are sick you can connect you can tell them to connect praise the lord you don't need to come out for them but you can call them or do whatever and tell them look connect to what god is doing hallelujah we bless the name of the lord worship team help us praise the lord father we give you all the praise and we trust you to glorify the name of your son right now in jesus name go ahead please who brought this lady who brought this lady who came with her please if you brought somebody let's know please we are not faking it here what's what's wrong with her legs who brought her my dear look at me what's wrong with your leg huh? you what there's a wound in my leg my leg is swollen your leg is swollen i'm looking in the spirit and i'm seeing a charm look at me what what did you say you sat in what I woke up. So you woke up and you saw your leg. leg. It's not a wound. This is a charm. In the name of Jesus, I break it. I curse it. Look at me. You've not been able to walk. I can walk. Okay, look at I me. Keep coming out look at me. It's coming out with pause. I curse it. Look at me. Just look at me. Keep your legs. Just look at me. Don't look at your legs. Look at me. Look at me. Not don't look at the legs. In the name of Jesus, walk. Well, come. come. Just come. Don't look at me. Look at me. Come. Walk. Come on. Give Jesus praise. Look at what is happening. <laughs> See, she's even surprised. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Can you climb up here? Climb by yourself. It's witchcraft. Don't be afraid. Help her if she needs any help. Okay, come. Move your legs. Just do what I'm doing. Move your legs. Move your legs. I curse that devil in the name of Jesus Christ. I break that power of witchcraft right now. I release that. Come on now, Koinonia. Give Jesus praise. God is healing people in this place. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy that anyone that has orchestrated anything for you to fall into in the name of Jesus Christ, this night I command those powers to be broken in the name of Jesus. My dear, it never returns to you again. And this veil that I see over you in the spirit, I command that veil to go now in the name of Jesus Christ. Give God praise. Help us worship him. Please, let's hurry. Give me in the garden. Heal.
guide me from the rain. My God is awesome. Keep me in the valley. I need from the rain. I'd like to know what, what really happened to him. Tell, you are the one who brought him. No, no, no. Talk, talk on his behalf. Let's save time, please. You said I have been sick since 1980. 1998. 1998. Yes. Is he hearing what I'm saying? Yes, hearing. Okay. Bless you, Daddy. Thank you. Since 1998. What's yes. the sickness? Liver. Liver problem. Liver problem, sir. Sir. What What are the symptoms? What happens to him? Okay, sir. The baby was swelling. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pray for you right now when i pray for you that swelling will go down now now and you'll be able to walk in the name of jesus christ i cause that spirit you are a spirit answer to the name of jesus right now i command the swollen stomach to go down right now you see what is happening to you in the name of jesus the heat sensation you're feeling is the power of god thank you jesus heal right now sir please come because the devil wants to use this and put stroke on you um would you mind if, if i ask you to jump will you jump okay just just try go ahead go ahead just go ahead Go ahead. Just lift it as high as you can. Look at me. Don't look at the legs. Go ahead, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right, let's let's try. Just jump a little. Don't be afraid. Go ahead. Go. On. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now walk, sir. Come. Just walk as fast as you can. As fast as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ. My God is awesome. You are healed completely. In the name of Jesus Christ, awesome. by the power of the As soon as I stepped here, I saw this woman tied from head to toe. This is what I'm seeing. Head to toe. And I'm seeing blood all over you. This is what the Lord is ministering to me. What's wrong with her? Um, suddenly, she just grows lean like this. Mommy, There's look no at me. Ache. You will not die. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Just hold it. Look at me. Just look at me. Thank you, Jesus. Now I cost this power. Kalabata Kotobaya. Let mama go now. In the name of Jesus. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. I cost that spirit. Let her go now. I lose you. What couldn't she do? Like Parkinson's disease. Mama, in the name of Jesus Christ. Walk. Come. 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 Clam by yourself. Come. 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 Follow me. Just follow me, Mama. Look at this. Come on now, Koinonia. Give God praise. Can you lift your hands? See, she's laughing. Try to lift your hands, Mama. Can you lift your hands? Can you lift your hands? Is it which of the hands can she lift? Okay, go ahead. Lift, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Bring it down. Lift your hands. Come on, Koinonia. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. In the name of Jesus, look at me. Lift your legs. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus. I cause that spirit. Mama is released right now. Koinonia, give God praise. Let's celebrate what God is doing. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that power. Come, I need to pray for you too. Your mother, right? 
I pray for you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because I'm seeing this thing. If I don't pray for you, it will affect you too. Right now, I curse. Lord, he's a worker in this house. Therefore, I curse that spirit. You are the sister. Lift your hands. If I don't pray for you, you have problem with marriage. You are young now, but we need to pray. This thing is the whole family thing. Out! In the name of Jesus Christ. I release you from this act of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ. Salvation returns to this family. Go ahead and massage her legs. Hallelujah. Please, we are going to really, really be fast. As soon as we pray for you, just give room. Usher, start collecting the prayer request. If you have somebody's picture as I come, I may not be able to talk again. And so we'll just lay our hands. Believe God. Believe God that the situation will change in Jesus' name. My God is father careful although there is an iron in your leg in the name of jesus may there be a miracle i command this shorter leg to grow out now by the spirit of god madam look at me do you want to try walking uh -uh. i'm not asking you what you, have. you came here because you believe god can help you is that true you believe that Okay, as careful as you can, move your legs. You are, you are related to her? Come. Who are you? You are sister, madam? All right. Don't cry. Don't cry. Please. Come, madam. Do you feel pain? You feel pain because of the iron. It's difficult now for us to... But after I pray for you, can you talk to the doctors to look at your legs and look at the iron? They'll be coming on Wednesday. Okay, fine. Father, in the name of Jesus, we agree. That as they come on Wednesday and check this leg, they will remove this iron and she will walk normally. Look at, look at this. Look at what the power of God is doing. In the name of Jesus Christ, I curse that spirit. Let there be a miracle right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her have a seat. Please quickly, let's, let's save time. Worship team, help us. Let's not have... They will remove the iron, madam, and you will walk normally. In the name of Jesus Christ. I need to pray for you. I need to pray for you, madam. Because as I'm looking at you, I'm seeing pains. I'm seeing pains. Um, like abdominal pains. And the Lord is asking me to minister to you. Can I pray for you? Hold my hands. Jesus, do a miracle right now. I cause that pain by the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please just line them forward. Let them just come forward in the name of Jesus. I don't need to ask you what the situation is. I really want you to believe that. Praise the Lord. I, I don't want you to think that maybe if I don't ask you, it means I don't give value to you. No. It's not even me doing the miracle. Right? It's the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Such an awesome God Such an awesome God Hallelujah Please rise up everybody Rise up everybody We are going to cause every wicked power Please listen Hallelujah Look at me. I told us that one of the benefits and the blessings of prayer is the ability to cause limiting powers. It's called a miracle service. And this is January. Hallelujah. We believe in the full gospel and everything Jesus died to give. Listen, every power that has tied anyone's destiny down, it's time for it to go. Are you listening to me? Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Go ahead and pray and say, Father, every spirit that is not of God looming around my life and my family, please make sure you are praying that as the word of God comes now, there will be mighty, mighty deliverance. Lord, let there be deliverances. Break limitations over people's lives. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 The reason why the reason why we do deliverance is not is not working against the fact that Jesus says we are this and that and that it is on the strength of that the Bible says although he has put all things under his feet he said we do not yet know I hear a lot of people criticize the ministry of deliverance and all of that um, while I know that there are exaggerations here and there let me tell you something the people of God must be subjected to the full weight of all that God's power and anointing can do are you following me now there are people who have struggled here. You love God, but doors will just not open. Let me tell you, there are powers sitting on people's destiny. And by the grace of God, by the grace of God, I'm going to minister to people right now. I see an angel of the Lord moving, and a lady is going to shout. I don't know why God does these things. Under the anointing. When that happens... It's a sign that the spirit of God is ready to move and deliver people. Lift your hands. Hear me, brothers and sisters. It takes the power of God to subdue principalities. And there are some of you right now, both for you and your family, there are forces that will not let you go. But this night and right now my goodness there is the fire of the spirit at the count of three it's not just a recitation you're going to shout that name the name that paid access for your liberty bring up bring them out my goodness deliverance is already happening inside and outside there will be mighty angels there is the sword of the spirit lord let there be deliverance every family Every destiny tied under any yoke of bondage, I invoke it in the spirit that at the count of three, those devils are under fire. One, two, three. Come out now. I command powers. Be gone now. I cause principalities. I cause spirits, I cause powers inside, outside. The angel of the Lord is moving. I command witchcraft. Bring them out. Spirits of ancestry. In the name of Jesus. The powers that have tied down man's destinies. The forces that have refused to let you go right now. I come with an apostolic anointing and in the name that is above all names let fire fall from heaven over your life over your academics 
over your marriage through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves lift your hands was he shouting one more time please bring them listen for some of you what will happen right now is not just for you alone but for your family just keep them down there hallelujah Malakata. and I see this affecting many ladies because I see marriage is being tied Makoto Tobakata Sheketelekaya as you shout that name Jesus you may not even know that that thing is in your family but all of a sudden physical fire physical fire will begin to burn right now on the count of three I challenge those powers one two three Go, 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 go. I cause that spirit. Delay, delay. I cause that spirit inside and outside. I command that devil of delay to go now. I command that power tying your destiny I command that power tying your breakthrough I command that power tying your family the price has been paid by the blood of Jesus I break every legal access by the blood of Jesus I break every legal access by the blood of Jesus I break every legal access by the blood of Jesus I release marriages I release miracles I command breakthrough fire is burning I command breakthrough I set those altars on fire I set those covens on fire hallelujah lift your hands where are those who have been oppressed academically lord where are they there are people who would have moved forward as i speak right now fire is coming on people fire is coming release the academics now release the academics now release the academics now 2015 the year of the rain I command those powers. I challenge them. They must leave. There is a family the Lord is showing me. You have been under stagnation for 10 years 10 solid years but as i prophesy right now in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i command that family to be released now i command that family to be released now i command that family to be released now Hallelujah. In the name that is above all names, I pray and I prophesy. The Lord is showing me men whose hands have been tied. And, and see, when your hands are tied, it means the capacity for favor and the capacity to move forward is not there. Lift your hands. Some of you will feel physical fire. Physical fire on your hands. There are chains burning. Lord, where are they? Let the sword of favor break them free from every oppression. Right now as I speak, anyone whose hands are tied in the spirit, I command those hands to be loose now. I command those hands to be loose now. 
the fire is falling 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 inside and outside falling i break the chain my goodness there are angels outside the fire is falling chains of delay Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In one minute, lift up the exact situation you want God to change. Begin to talk to Him. Go ahead before prophecy comes. Please don't keep quiet. No matter how impossible it is, there is an anointing. Inside and outside, make sure you are talking to the Lord. This and that and that are my requests. Do a miracle. Some of you need a 24 hour miracle. Now all those here in front, in the name of Jesus, and by the fire of the Holy Spirit, at the count of three, not only will those devils leave, they must release your family members. I speak to every spirit. You know my voice. I represent the embassy of heaven. And in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, you will leave now. One, two, three. Go, go, go. Go, go. Go, go. Never to return. Never to return. Never to return. Never to return. Go. Go. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards this request. Your requests are there. Please, in case you've not dropped yours, locate it quickly to the ushers. It's not a ritual. There is a mystery of answered prayer. Hallelujah. The Bible says how that Ezekiah took the request before God. The threats may be joblessness. It may be impossible situations. As I kneel upon this request and we pray together, just for one or two minutes, see, I assure you, I assure you, you will return with a testimony. Except you refuse to come and testify. Stretch your hands and begin to pray. Thank you, Jesus. last week we thought that words activate spiritual laws hallelujah i want you to receive for some of you there will be an instant performance in the name of jesus i want to start by praying for families every family that has 
been in a state of stagnation please lift your hands inside and outside i'm prophesying now every family represented in this place in the name of jesus christ in this year of the rain i command that between now and next month miracle service let there be dramatic breakthroughs let there be dramatic breakthroughs let there be dramatic breakthroughs by the agency of the spirit we activate every law that needs to be in motion in the name of jesus the laws of favor the laws of destiny help us in the name of jesus I pray anyone here who has been under any academic bondage from secondary school to master's PhD right now in this year of the rain I command speed for you I declare move forward now move forward now make progress now move forward now in the name of Jesus I pray for anything that has died in your hands business the works of your hands relationships in the name that is above all names let resurrection happen in your life now please believe what I'm saying believe what I'm saying God is changing people's situations. This is how God changes situations by the power of his prophetic word. I say it again. Whatever has died, I speak to that which was dead. Come back to life now. I command every blood condition whoever is standing here and you are ss right now we change that genotype to aa in the name of jesus christ i cause hepatitis be crushed to the root in the name of jesus we cause hiv you leave god's people in the name of jesus everyone here who has been oppressed by spirits you sleep in the night and they oppress you in the name of jesus let the fire of the holy ghost bring deliverance to you now let the fire of the holy spirit bring deliverance to you now There are people here it works for others until it gets to your turn then it fails right now in the name of jesus i command that the last time that tragedy happened in your life the power of god is moving on this world moving strong on this world the last time it happened the mystery behind that tragedy i cause it in the name of jesus I declare that in this January between now and next month's miracle service what you could not do in the whole of 2014 may my God empower your hand to do it in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for every dying CGPA here hear the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus I command it to come alive there are people here students your true status is first class but something has tied you down your true status is four points but something has tied whatever that something is I lift it off your life now in this year 2015 go back to your departments and break barriers in the name of jesus 
I pray for every business here. Whatever has stopped it from working, in the name of Jesus, we command it to come alive now. Whoever needs to come into your life between now and next miracle service and open a door for you, I call them forth now. I call them forth now. I declare whoever is jobless and looking for a job here or your family members in the name that is above all names where they said there are no jobs we create jobs now believe it believe it we create jobs now in the name of Jesus Christ whoever has been assigned by my father to favor you and has refused to respond to you in the name of Jesus may the Lord compel them to respond in the name of Jesus I pray for your spiritual life whatever has robbed you of an effective prayer life every worry everything that has robbed you I command fresh impartation of prayer grace receive it now fresh impartation of prayer fire whatever makes you study the Bible and you don't understand may the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now and I pray for you every habit in your life masturbation pornography and any other thing that is not of God that has robbed you of your Christian integrity you love God but you find things pushing you that embarrass you right now I agree with you be delivered now I agree with you be delivered now hallelujah whoever is being eyed for death in this place that the devil has vowed that you will not see February miracle service I'm praying by the mystery of the blood I open that door of gate of, of death and I command in the name of Jesus that your soul is ransomed from the gates of death in the forthcoming election you are preserved in the name of Jesus whoever comes to destroy you will die before he gets to you in the name of Jesus as you travel on the road you are preserved you cannot be a victim of accident in the name of Jesus I establish the covenant of peace upon your life you are protected by the angels of heaven I declare right now that in 2015 living from hand to mouth that spirit of begging living from hand to mouth by the mystery of divine supply I bail you out of that wicked situation in the name of Jesus I pray for you whatever you wrote here as a request right now I agree with you that it is turned into a testimony I say it one more time whatever you wrote here as a request I agree with you we turn it into a testimony by the power that turned the rod of Moses into a serpent and back into a rod I turn what was here as a as a prayer request by the power of the Holy Ghost let it become a testimony in your hands in the name of Jesus every factor that must be in place for you to stand here and testify I release it in the name of Jesus I pray we pray for our lecturers every lecturer that has been victimized and any lecturer that the devil is eyeing to bury this year in the name of Jesus by the mystery of the blood they are preserved I'm speaking any position that belongs to any God-fearing lecturer that is being truncated by powers of darkness we stand as the parliament of heaven 
in this city and we enforce compliance in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for you if there is one thing that should happen in your life let it be indescribable favor 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 I prophesy from the depths of my heart if you have never seen favor happen in your life you will see favor that will make you cry financial favor marital favor academic favor spiritual favor receive it in the name of Jesus hallelujah lift your hands and bless the Lord thank you Jesus hallelujah now you're here you've never given your heart to the Lord Jesus you've never made him Lord of your life we're out of time please keep standing everybody let's honor these people you are here and you have never given your life to Christ remember we said the basis for your victory is what Jesus Christ has done wherever you are or you have once given your life to Christ but for some reason you found your life going haywire and you need to make your ways right don't say time is gone please wherever you are inside or outside you might be a new student you've been a Christian all your life or you may be new in this town I pray right now that you respond to the call of God wherever you are you are returning to Jesus or you are making decisions for the first time please make your way to the front be bold about it be bold about it I know God is talking to somebody don't wait for anybody to come you are the first person find your way to the front God bless you God bless you please make sure you celebrate them as they come celebrate them God bless you those outside no matter how far you are make your way to the front Jesus said if you are ashamed of me before men I will be ashamed of you before my father if you deny me before men young and old make your way you are not too far don't let the devil say you are far make your way run to the front run to the front forget about your neighbor or who you came with it's a personal affair tonight hallelujah thank you so much for coming lift your hands as i leave you to pray say after me jesus i believe in you i believe you died for me tonight i repent of my sins i obtain forgiveness and cleansing wash me with the blood of jesus i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare that i'm a changed person the power of sin is broken over my life and i'll never be the same in the name of jesus now keep your hands lifted father thank you you brought these ones to your throne may their decisions be genuine preserve them by the power of the holy spirit they will never be the same i break the power of sin over your life you have eternal life into your spirit and i declare that you're of the family of faith in the name of jesus christ amen and amen now i'd like you to follow the ushers follow the gentlemen waving their hands all of you this way they'll give you a few informations and you'll be back to your seat god bless you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching